Listen, I'm telling you, there is a realm of the anointing, there's the realm of the presence of the Lord that you are allowed to at this very moment to go deeper into if you're willing. What happens is people are constantly being distracted because there's things that distract you all day long and you're used to being distracted. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. But if so, suddenly you are captivated by the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, suddenly all of those distractions that have kept you from walking in the Spirit and doing the things that God has purposed for you to do, it comes to an end. It's glorious life begins. All those things you've been reading about that are good, that you really wanted to have, suddenly become so easy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ha, I'm here to I'm here as bearer of good news tonight, telling you that God is is absolutely interested in giving you everything that He Himself possesses, all the ministry works of Jesus Christ, and even more. Depends on whether or not you're willing to cooperate and willing to go with God and be obedient. It's really He's already made His decision. He's decided that He loves you so much. He's decided that you're very important to him. Now it's up to you to decide what, how you feel about him. And I pray tonight in Jesus' name that you allow the mercies of God to so fill your heart that you'll allow an encounter with the Holy Ghost to bring to you a revelation of Jesus and that your response will be, wow, Lord, you're so wonderful to me. I, I love you with everything that I have and I want to do whatever you ask. Jesus has looked at you and me and he has told us that he'll do whatever we ask. He said it, I'll do whatever you ask. Father, he said, Father will do whatever you ask. It's amazing. It is amazing. In fact, you know, the Lord Jesus says, if anyone believes on me, anyone doesn't exclude. The, no one's excluded. If anyone believes on me, the works which I do shall do in greater works than these. Jesus has said, if you'll abide in me, in other words, you'll find your whole identity in me. Too many people have got their identity still in this world. They've got their idea, identity still in the concepts of the things that they've learned either in academics or, you know, other areas of life. And the Lord says, come in over here and dwell, uh, dwell in me. Come over here and abide in me. If you'll abide in me and then you'll find all of your identity and all of your purpose for living in me. And you will allow my words to abide in you so that it will be the inspiration of all that you think and all of your thoughts and all of your hopes and visions and aspirations and purposes. Then, whatever you ask, I'll do it. It's pretty radical, isn't it? Whatever you ask. Wow. Amen. That's pretty wide open, isn't it? You have some needs tonight. There's people in this place. You have needs. The most important need that you have is an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you realize it or not. I know in this mercy and grace you called upon His name, and God, in His wonderful love, saved you. He changed you. The Spirit of the Lord came upon you and brought forth a new creation. But God's got so much more for you. There's so much more. There's no reason to remain spiritual babies for the rest of your life here on earth. There's an opportunity for you to be built up and to grow up here tonight. And so we're going to, by the help and the grace of the living God, which we have, we're going to press in and we're going to remove those hindrances out of the way that have stood before you, kept you, prevented you, held you back. We're going to see those things that have become hardness in your heart melted away by the grace of God. We're going to see the things, wrong ideas, wrong concepts, burned up by the fire of God's word. Father is going to take and fasten you in his presence, fasten you and position you in the realms of his divine glory. And you're going to know a joy unspeakable and, and full of glory. You're going to know a life and a life that's more abundant. You're going to have rivers of living water gushing out of your innermost being. You're going to understand what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. How many of you realize that you create an atmosphere by your attitude? How many, of you how many of you really realize that other people really create an atmosphere by their attitude? Right? Because you're more aware of what they're doing sometimes than what you're doing. And you walk into a room, you're all happy and you're just feeling really good. And you woke up feeling, you woke up feeling like you could conquer the world. And all of a sudden you walked into the living room and everybody in there is all sad, all down, all beat up. And everything, everything's just, you know, going south. East. And everybody's down in the mouth and everybody's got a complaint. That's an atmosphere, isn't it? You know that the frown on your face creates an atmosphere. Did you know that the doubt and the unbelief, the discouragement, 
creates an atmosphere. However, did you know that a smile on your face and confidence in your heart creates an atmosphere? <laughs> Just in a human realm, it creates an atmosphere. You can ultimately be in control of the environment. You can be the one that decides which way this thing is going to go. Is it going to go into a place of cursing or is it going to go into a place of blessing? Imagine what God has done for us. He has caused us to be blessed with all, the, all spiritual blessings in a heavenly realm. He's called everyone, caused every one of us to be able to take a hold of something that goes beyond anything that's, that an atmosphere that can be created by a human being. <laughs> it's something that's far above a smile on your face, a confidence in your heart, a good outlaw, outlook and a positive attitude. This is a realm where God the Holy Ghost fills you with everything that is good. Everything that belongs to, to life. Everything that belongs to godliness. Every good and perfect gift where He fills you with goodness. Where He fills you with peace. Where He fills you with a divine love that gushes out of you like rivers and knocks everybody down. <laughs> under His power. You ever tried to stand up in a river? I'm talking about a real river. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> California, you got to go north to find a real river. But the Lord gives us rivers of living water. There's so much more in the Holy Ghost. There's so much more to this relationship with God. I mean, there's so much more that you and I can realize. All we have to do is begin to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with a hunger and a thirst. We've got to recognize that the things that are going on around us in our life would actually steal that appetite for God. The things that are going on in, in a world that is filled with all kinds of entertainment, all kinds of various different choices, which really boil down to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And at best, it's the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the pleasures of this world. Both of those rob us. Jesus said in his sermon in Matthew chapter 13 concerning the cares of the life, deceitfulness of riches, and pleasures of this world, he I referred to them as different types of ground. And ultimately, when he got to the cares of life, the seedfulness of riches and pleasure of this world, he was talking about the kind of ground that it's been, it's been seeded by God. It's God's ground. And, and literally, the tree of salvation, uh, the tree of the new birth, has actually taken root. But at the same time, other things have taken root as well. Other, other, other interests are there as well. And Jesus looks at them as thorns that choke this tree of life has been given to us so that this tree can never bring forth fruit into perfection. And he, and he, and he uses this analogy to address where our affections are going to be and what our choices are going to be. You know, I know that a lot of you would like for me to talk to you about all the stuff that has happened over the past 30 days in Nepal and South Korea and, and Japan. But that's past. I'm here now. I'm here now. I know miracles happened this morning. I know people got healed as soon as I told them to stand up. Pain left their body. Problems, infections left their body as soon as I told them to stand in this place. I'm going to have to talk about what happened last year. I can talk about what happened this morning. You know, when we got to South Korea, I, we had just seen so many people healed of mental diseases, crazy demon-possessed people in southern Nepal crawling around like animals, totally tormented, screaming, being those kinds of people that would be put in padded cells and under, bound under constraints. And there, there is no such facility for them. There's no such service. They're just in the neighborhood, so to speak. And the next day, they're up on the platform, their face radiating with the presence of Jesus, saying how that Jesus came to them. Yeah, I passed by them and I touched them, but they didn't see me. In their testimony, they saw Jesus. <laughs> and I'm in South Korea, and I'm talking about that. But I don't have to talk about that long, because miracles are, start happening in South Korea. Signs and wonders start happening in South Korea. People begin to be touched by the presence of Jesus. The Holy Ghost has come so that you might and I might encounter heaven. God wants you to walk off the pages of your life and walk onto the pages of the Bible. You don't have to say, oh, I wish I could know uh, God like Elijah knew God. Elijah's testimony is just there so that you would be able to understand that he is inviting you to come into the place where he now dwells. You know, he's been, hallelujah, he's been in the presence of the Lord now, um, standing there uh, in an earthly body, earthly body now, 
for 2,600 years. Pretty amazing, eh? Mm -hmm. 2,600 years. Probably about two and a half days. <laughs> because it's when you stood in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> it is so captivating. It sets a whole new standard for living. It, it, the bar of life, the, the purpose of meaning of your existence, it, it's absolutely changed. It's redefined and you can never go back. You can never go back to living in the slums of a demon-possessed world and finding pleasure there because true pleasure had just overwhelmed you, the very life and presence of the living God that causes the seraphim to veil their face and veil their feet and cry as they fly through the atmosphere saying, Holy, holy, holy! Ha <laughs> ha! Something that we can't even begin to express because it's so aloof, so distant, so other, so transcendent from where we are, by and large, most people in this place. But God's not intended it to be that way. He's given us access into His presence, into the very throne room by the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's not limited anymore to enter His gates with thanksgiving and enter into His courts with praise. Now we come boldly by the blood of Jesus Christ into the holies of holies. Man, that's a whole nother realm. Dear people, it's a whole nother realm. And Satan runs his tricks and plays his games and people get imprisoned in religion and tradition and never go on to know the Lord. I'm going to invite you to come into the school of the Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. The Holy Spirit has come to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's come to mentor us. He's come to take everything that belongs to Jesus and reveal it to us. He's come to glorify Jesus. He's come to bring to us all the realms of heaven so that in the midst of the church, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit would be active in every person's life as Paul described in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 through 11. To one there would be the word of knowledge, to another the word of wisdom, to another the discerning of spirits, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, prophecy, tongues, interpretations of tongues, signs and wonders, the power of the Holy Ghost being revealed, dreams and visions. The glory of heaven being manifested. This is a light city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. I'm telling you right now. Jesus Christ has all authority in earth right now. People don't realize that. He said so. He said in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. He said all authority has been given to me in earth. Yes, he did. And I emphasize earth because other people emphasize heaven. <laughs> Yeah, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And he's looking for somebody to believe that. Because what happens if you don't recognize this or not, the Lord said, you go now and baptize all nations. Wow. That's what he says in that context. He's given us authority. He says, go make disciples of all nations. All authority belongs to me in heaven and earth. Nick, look, we read about how Nebuchadnezzar had to go eat grass like, a, like an ox. He had to go, he was completely given over to total mental insanity. He was taken from the lofty place of being the ruler of the known world to being completely insane and, and, and set out into a, into a wilderness field to, to be able to, 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 so everyone just leave him alone and he could be, act out his insanity to one day come to his senses and say, God reigns in the kingdom of men. Well, I tell you, far beyond that, Christ Jesus Listen to me. Listen to me. You can run the risk of living the rest of your life as a spiritual baby. Confined and limited to the circumstances and the situations that threaten you. Beginning with money. Most people make the decisions of what they're going to do with their life based upon how, whether or not the money says it's okay. If the money says it's okay, you're going to go take a vacation. If the money says it's okay, you're going to go shopping. If the budget says it's okay, you're going to buy this and you're going to buy that and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And then that just folds right on over into how you follow Jesus. And God said, you can't serve God money too. 
Somehow, you've got to realize that God has a miracle provision for you in every dimension of your life, spiritually, physically, and materially, and financially. And He'll make it bizarre. You'll say, I'll tell you what, you need some money? Go catch a fish, you'll find it in its mouth. That's where my bank account is. Uh, it's deposited there. It's enough for you and for me. Huh. And then people say, oh, I need to go find a fish. No, you don't. You just need to understand. <laughs> The message, God has supernatural provision for those who know how to move in faith. God has supernatural provision for those who will step over into a realm called heaven. <laughs> Listen to me. You don't have to wait till you die to go to heaven. You're born into heaven. When you are born of the Spirit, what a glorious thing. What a glorious grace. Paul said in Colossians 1.13, we've been translated from the kingdoms of this earth into the kingdoms of the dear son. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. He makes it even more pro pronounced than just the kingdom of this earth or the limitation. But I wanted to say that because it's so important to emphasize the conditions and the situations right now that you let bind you because you believe its word. You believe its influence. It's superior to all other things in your life. Your experience, those things which you know, the way things work under the natural laws, under the economy, under the society, under the definition of that which your culture dictates. <laughs> Dear people, hallelujah. You don't need to live that way. There's another way to live. <laughs> people tell me, when you go into Papua New Guinea, you need to understand you've got to, you know, you've got to try to relate to their culture and honor the culture. You got to be kidding me. Their culture demands that I fall down and imbibe demons. I'm supposed to honor that. Their culture demands that I give a special offering to the shaman, to the witch doctor. I'm like, am I supposed to honor their culture? No. I'm going to bring them into not a Western culture, but the culture of the kingdom of heaven. I'm not trying, I'm not trying today to honor an American culture or Western culture. I'm going to probably be very offensive to that culture. Because I'm going to talk to you about the culture of the kingdom of God. I'm going to talk to you about a place where nothing is impossible for them that believe. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about a realm where God has empowered us with all authority in His name to do the same things that He did to represent heaven, to represent the Father just like He represented heaven and just like He represented the Father. Everybody knows that Jesus ministered out of heaven, right? Surely you know. He says no man has anything unless he first receive it from heaven. When he was talking to Nathaniel, Nathaniel was overwhelmed by his word of knowledge and his insight concerning his life. And he says, Nathaniel, that's nothing. From this day forward, you shall see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You're going to see the realm of heaven all around me. Your eyes are going to behold this divine glory. Peter and James and John was able to go into one of Jesus' prayer meetings. You want to have a prayer meeting? You want a definition for a prayer meeting? You want a definition for touching heaven? You want a definition for the glory came down and filled my soul? Look at Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, we make it the Mount of Transfiguration theologically, but it isn't any of that. It isn't a Mount of Transfiguration. He went to the prayer meeting. And while he was in prayer, his very clothing began to radiate with the presence and the glory of Almighty God. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a church. What a church. Jesus defines for me what a church meeting is supposed to look like. He, when, he, when, he, when he had church and, and everybody's coming they, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they continue to come. And now you've got people from all the regions round about Galilee and Judea and, and Samaria and beyond. Are coming to this meeting, and this meeting doesn't have an ending. It lasts for three days. People are so captivated. It's not like a two-hour meeting. It's not a five-hour meeting. It's not a day meeting. It's not a night vigil. It's a three-day meeting that would have continued to go on had man not got his fingers in the pie. <laughs> had man not tried to start m manipulating what God was doing. Yeah. Oh. I mean, my faith was, faith was there that the maimed, the maimed, the steer people, the maimed were healed. That means your arm is cut off or your leg is cut off. 
And it begins to grow out. I haven't seen those kind of miracles. Not before my own eyes in, my, in, in the ministry that, that I'm moving forward in, in God. But I'm going to. I'm going to not because I'm sitting around hoping that someday. I'm going to because I'm moving in that way. I'm laying hands on the sick. I'm telling everybody, bring the dead, they shall live. I'm telling them, bring the maimed. And then you think about it in third world when we tell them to bring all the disease. Ooh, there's no docs. They bring all kinds of diseases. I mean, there's tumors hanging off the sides of heads, hanging out the bodies. There's people with no legs, no arms. There's all kinds of crazy, no eyes, white eyes. One night I was ministering alongside my dear friend Carlos Anagondia, and, uh, and Bubba here goes and finds the worst person in the place <laughs> who needed he healing. He was deaf. He was deaf. But he was worse than death because he had no holes. Not only did not have any holes to hear out of, he had no ears. They weren't on his head. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? Oh, God, it be thy will? No, you're going to get after the program. You're going to believe God. He's the healer. He told us to go and do these things. He told us to go do these works and greater works. I know exactly what Peter preached. I know what he preached because as soon as he comes into town, people go and drag the sick and the diseased out of the houses, lay them on the street, that if his very shadow passing over them, they should be completely and totally healed. I know what Paul preached. I've seen him over there at the school of Tyrannus and what was going on there as the people come and gathered and were healed of every one of their plagues and diseases and so much so that they were taking any, anything off of Paul's body. If there was any kind of handkerchief or any kind of apron that he touched or was on his body, they would take it, they would tear it up, divide it among themselves, go wherever it was that there was someone sick and the diseases would depart out of their body and they would be delivered from any evil spirit. That's the church. That's the church. The church is seen in Acts chapter 2 when it's baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. And there's a tangible presence of God. It's a rushing mighty wind and clothed in tongues of fire. It's not a bunch of make-believe charismatic stuff. It's power from on high. It's a tangible glory and evidence of this living God that is manifested in the preaching of the Word of God, the declaration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The ministry of Jesus, beautiful ministry. Hallelujah. They've been there for three days. Everybody's captivated. They're caught away in heaven. What a miracle revival. What a miracle move of the Spirit. I want those. They're so hungry. Jesus said, don't send them away. He said, you give them to eat. How? Bring here a few loaves, a few fishes. We're three days in a faith meeting. Huh? We're, three, we're 72 hours in the midst of a faith meeting. See, I was born in revival, literally. I was born in Caney, Kansas. All my passport says Caney, Kansas. Oh, you from Caney, Kansas? No, I was born in a revival. I've never been back. My dad was doing a six-week revival in Caney, Kansas, and I came along. <laughs> so that's my birthplace. I know nothing about the place. I was literally born in a revival. I understand how revivals have gone on in the Western world and how the kingdom of God has been advanced in days gone past, how the power of God has been manifested in such uh, unimaginable ways. Because they would have meetings until there was a breakthrough. They would have all night prayer meetings until all of a sudden people would come under the conviction of the Holy Ghost in the township, in, in, the, in the neighborhood, in the region in which they were. They, they stayed 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 30 weeks in meetings until all of a sudden great miracles and signs and wonders begin to happen. It's the way it all began. So it's, it's what that's t tonight. There are a lot of things about most of your lives that have to be changed before you can experience God more. This is true. I may get out Isaiah 55 and talk to you tonight about what God wants to do and those things that are standing in the way. Those things that prevent you, like I was saying, the things that choke the word of God, that choke out the life that God has given to us, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the pleasures of this life, this interest that distracts you, that you've given place to in your life, demon power that believes it has authority over you and literally, as it were, as it were runs in interference against the Holy Spirit, being able to do what he wants to do in your life because he's not going to do it without your permission. You've got to will to will God's will. 
You've got to be willing and obedient. People aren't, there's many people in the church today, they're not willing. They're not willing because they have other beliefs. They have other ideas. They have other concepts. Here in America, here in Southern California, the spirit of intellectualism dominates and rules men, men's minds and understandings. They sit around and think about God instead of having a hunger and thirst for His presence. Huh? They sit around and contemplate Scripture with no intention on ever doing it just to think it's good enough to have orthodoxy when God said it is not. You must be a doer of the Word. Well, how much of the Word do you do? <laughs> if you just take Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 and you start doing it, your life would be changed. A light of God's divine glory would be seen in the midst of His people. It's true. The Lord relayed on my heart tonight because I'm just calling you into the school of the Spirit. I'm calling you to come and learn, understand <laughs> how to walk in the Spirit, how to be led by the Spirit, how to be taught by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost school is about you learning how to do the works of Jesus. It's about you learning how to follow Jesus, not only in His character, but in His signs and wonders, in His divine power and authority. God has predestinated us to be conformed to the image of His Son in every dimension. Romans 8, 29. Romans 8, 32, he that gave us all things, <laughs> I mean, he that spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all, how shall he not also freely give us all things by him right now? Oh, but there, God's not going to do anything without faith. And I'm going to tell you right now, faith is you being captivated by Jesus. And listen to me, I'm telling you, faith is by you being in awe of who he is. And that, that is not even possible until you allow the Holy Ghost to reveal him because only the Holy Spirit can show him. You see, the, the Roman centurion, faith is first introduced in, in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10. It's never introduced before that in the New Testament. That's the first time in the New Testament that the subject of faith and really the subject of faith is unveiled in the Bible. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10. Here's this guy, this Roman centurion, and the Romans believed that they were superior to all other races, and especially Israelites. The Israelites were nothing but just dogs. And all of the people that they conquered, they basically had in the same dimension, put in the same category. Now, I'm going to be ministering to people. I'm going to be praying for people as I go along. Don't be distracted. Stay with me, okay? So... Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I put the red blood of Jesus Christ upon you and I break every power off of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son like God. Amen. I break every power of those powers, amen, that are unlike God. And that goes for every one of you here in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. And this Roman centurion who believed that he was part of a superior race has an encounter with Jesus. And he says, I'm not worthy that you should even come into my house. Now the Israelite, who is a far inferior race, is superior. He's had an encounter with Jesus. He's seen the living God manifest in flesh. I'm not worthy that you should even, I'm not worthy even to be talking to you. <laughs> in fact, some people believe that another story about the centurion that's in Luke, he sends a servant ahead of him because he doesn't even feel worthy to come and, put, and even petition the Lord at all. Jesus looks at him and says, this is faith. This is it. He said, I'm not worthy that you should come to my house, speak the word only. Well, tonight I'm going to ask you, is that real to you? It can only be real to you if you've encountered Jesus. Does Jesus only need to speak the word only or does he need to bring a whole bunch of proofs? Because here's the word. Here's the word. He sent his word. Uh, Matthew 9, 28, two blind men came to Jesus wanting to be healed. Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He, he's not just talking to two blind men. He's talking to you right now. Do you believe I'm able to do this, whatever it is that you need the Lord to do? There's people who have diseases in their body. It's a seed of the demon power. 
They have torment. They have trouble. It's things that are opposing God because God's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Spirit, soul, and body. Forget not all of His benefits. He heals all of your diseases, cleanses all of your iniquity. Don't lay, don't lay sin to God's charge. Don't lay iniquity to God's charge. He doesn't afflict people with sickness and disease. Not one Bible verse of Scripture says so, neither in the Old Testament nor in the New. He doesn't. He does not. And yet people believe that. Whereas there are thousands of verses of scriptures that clearly describe to us God delivering us from sickness and disease. Understanding that Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil. See, God made man to walk with him. He did. Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, he formed and shaped man in his own image and his own likeness. He breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. Think about it, dear people. Breathe in and out. That came right from God. And I'm telling you right now, medical science does not know how that works. To be honest with you, medical science doesn't really even know how a bird flies. They got all the engineering drawings and mechanisms. But you know what? They can't make a model that works. He can have everything perfect. The wings can be flapping just right, the body weight and length, and it still don't work. They're going to discover this whole bunch of it's spirit. Huh? Huh? Breath of God. He made us and created us to walk with Him. That's the easiest thing that we know to do is to walk with God. It's the longing of every person's heart. There's so many people right now in this city, they're just trapped and imprisoned in fear and pain and torment. They're looking for a deliverer. People are so desperate for God, they'll even bow down to a fat Buddha doll. That's desperate. That's desperate. That's desperate. When all the time, you and I have been given the keys to the kingdom to unlock their prison door if you and I were willing to step into a relationship with the Lord and come into the school of the Spirit and be taught of God. There's, at this time, we can literally say that no one needs to be your teacher. Every man will be taught of God. But unfortunately, no one, it seems, or few, are willing to come into the school of the Spirit and be taught of God because the Holy Spirit is going to show you how to function in the realms of heaven, not earth. He's going to give you heavenly interests and heavenly pur purposes. He's going to fill your heart with compassion for the needy and for the sick and for the diseased, for the oppressed, for the orphan, for the widow. He's going to fill your heart with a longing to see people absolutely delivered in every way from every torment and every evil thing. People are too busy. But we're inviting you, petitioning you, come into the school of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost wants you to come follow Him. <laughs> he wants to lead you. And as many as are being willing to be led by the Spirit, then these are children of God. And we're predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son. Romans 8, 29, so that Jesus can be seen to be the firstborn among many brethren. Huh? So that we can be seen to be a part of that family. A family. <laughs> a royal family. The Lord said to Israel, he said, I'm taking away the kingdom from you and I'm going to give it to a nation that will bring forth the fruits thereof. And Peter said, you are a holy nation concerning the church. You are royal priesthood. You are treasured people. Wow. Why? So that you and I could show forth the praises of God. God wants you and I to come around Christ Jesus, the cornerstone, and be built and put into place by the Holy Spirit as living stones and built up a spiritual house to offer up sacrifice unto the Lord, a sacrifice that causes all the world to see the manifest glory and power of the Almighty Amen. in our midst. Yes. Many of the things that you, when you step into the school of the Spirit, He's going to teach you is He's going to teach you how to be a giver. He's going to teach you how to be generous. He's going to teach you how to bless those who curse you. He's going to teach you how to love those who hate you. He's going to teach you how to create, be in control of the end results and the atmosphere. Huh? You will never be in an argument ever again. You'll be so generous. It doesn't matter what anybody says to you. You're going to be happy with them. You're going to be blessing them. You're going to be loving them. You're going to be cherishing them. Isn't that radical? You talk about living in heaven. Look, you talk about being in control when all of a sudden you're not going to be cursing. You're not going to be withholding. You're not going to be holding back because somebody did you wrong. You're going to do them wrong because somebody made you unhappy. You're going to make them unhappy. What if you start living to bless people? What if you start living to make your wife happy? Amen. What if you start living to make your husband happy? Huh? What if you start living to make your parents happy? 
Wow. And, and then you recognize God's given me an unlimited supply of this divine ability so that this happy and this treasure and this blessing can flow out of me like rivers of living water. Those are just some of the first things you teach you how to be generous, how to be a giver. God so loved the world he gave. You know, Paul talks about giving. Jesus talked about giving. He said, if you give, it'll be given to you. Press down, shake it together and running over. Shemin heap into your bosom. Look, it's a law. How about when you start giving joy? Huh. Well, how about when you start giving those spiritual things that belong to the realms of the fruits of the Spirit, the nature of the Holy Ghost? You start giving peace. You start giving kindness. You start giving goodness. You start giving those kinds of things that only can come from God. My, it's going to come back to you. 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. It's going to be multiplied. People make it an emphasis of the dollar bill and the finances. People are spiritual first. John said, I, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Prosper, be in health, soul prosper. Spiritual, huh? Spiritual, divine spiritual ability, huh? Divine spiritual ability because now the Holy Ghost is in control of your life. Rules your life, governs your life. You're always at a choice he's not going to make you. You have a choice to hate. Many people walk in, in that hate, some form of it. But at that, at that crossroads, you can say, Holy Spirit, come fill me <laughs> with your love. And you overwhelm you with love, and you can bring an atmosphere of love to any situation, begin to sign as a light into a lost and dying world. It'll change, it changes people, beginning with your family. Huh? No, 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 no. I've watched this. I've watched this work in, in families. Let me just get real practical with you. I've watched where a husband and a wife are upset at each other and they're sitting there being frowning, being mean to each other, just short, you know, just snappy with each other. Somebody else walks into the room and the husband lights up and he's all happy. Well, what's wrong, man? You're, I think you're all upset. No, I'm just upset with her. Oh, you selfish thing, you. Oh, so you're going to give that blessing of joy and love and pleasantness and acceptance to those who are you deem worthy of it. Those who haven't offended you. Well, what if God did that to us? Huh? He commended his love towards us when we were yet dead in our trespasses and sins. Huh? He commended that love. Oh, people, a selfish life is a very lonely life. It's a very lonely existence. God's come and given to us the ability to begin to live in an unselfish generosity where we completely and totally give. Jesus gave himself. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jesus gave and offered himself up on a cross of sacrifice to redeem us because he loved us so much. He gave everything for us. God gave us the two most precious things to him in an unlimited way. First, his word who was incarnated and made flesh, Christ Jesus. Second, the Holy Spirit who's been freely poured out upon all flesh. And then we're going to sit there and be mad at each other? No. Come on, people. Don't have... That does, please, I pray it doesn't take you all your life to learn how wonderful it is to just bless and, and treat people with kindness and love and blessing. Mm -hmm. Alleluia. No matter who, what, how they treat you. Yeah. Huh? Not walking around punishing them and withholding from them, being upset at them. Oh, this is the school of the Spirit in a very practical way. These are fundamental things about learning how to walk in love. Did you know that, did you know that it's such an important part of the school of the Spirit? Paul actually said in Ephesians, in chapter 3 and verse 19, he first opens up verse 16 and he says, I pray that you be filled with the Spirit, be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. And then he goes on to say that you may be able to Comprehend with all saints what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. That's verse 18, 19. To know the love of Christ. To know the love and cooperate with the love. Not just, uh, I want to be a recipient. I'm a part of the bless me club. I just want to be a recipient. Just give, give, give to me. And I'm not giving anywhere. I'm not giving to anybody else. No, 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 no. You need to start giving things away. Because you don't even know how to receive. It's not coming to you until you give it. If you're going to, if the miracle of provision is going to come to you, you're going to have to step out and cooperate with God. It's just like Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He said that if you give generously, you're going to receive generously. God's going to cause all grace to abound unto you. That's in a financial realm. And many people need to learn it in a financial realm. But it's not limited to a financial realm, dear people. 
It's first and foremost supposed to be working in, a, in the spiritual realm where you and I are giving love and participating with that love to know the love of Christ. There he says you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. That's why the school of the Spirit teaching you and I how to walk in the generosity and the mercy and the forgiveness, the compassion of love is so essential to being able to go ahead and move forward with God in the signs, wonders, and miracles, the demonstration of the power of God, the authority that heaven has right now, that the name of Jesus has right now over all the works of the devil in every area of sin, sickness, disease, and torment that hold people in a prison. God's given you and I the ability to set them free. That's what we have. And you don't think you're going to give an account for that? You step into the throne room and the Lord Jesus looks at you and says, all power in heaven and earth was given unto me. All authority in heaven and earth was given to me and I gave it to you. What did you do with it? I gave you power and authority to go set the captives free. I gave you power and authority to turn people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. What did you do with it? Well, I was too upset. I, I was tricked. I got deceived by the enemy. I got, I got imprisoned and my own problem. Captivated by my own issues, by my own torments, by my own circumstance. I never knew how to break out. Well, I'm here to break you out. Hallelujah. And I'm here tonight by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to see you cured of all your sicknesses and all your diseases and little lungs clear up right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Infections go out of the body. They don't belong in the body. There's a place of living in divine health. There is a place of living in divine health where you, don't be, where you won't be sick for many years and you could walk through the midst of sickness and disease and it can't bother you. I don't have to just talk about John G. Lake of how he said, put the plague on my hand. It'll die in my hand. There was great signs and wonders and miracles taking place in South Africa. When he went into South Africa, every one of the works of Jesus was manifested in South Africa. Today, the apostolic church that John G. Lake started back in the early 1900s is the biggest church of South Africa. He said, I'm the temple of the living God. Christ Jesus lives in me. I'm one with him. I'm a possessor of the divine nature. Sickness and disease has no power over me anymore than sin. Put the plague on my hand and it die. A, a contagious plague that was killing people by the tens of thousands. Put it in my hand. I'll show you. John G. Lake was a proof provider. He was an experimentalist showing people and proving people, to people the power of God. Let me just say this. It would be good for you to read about those uh, champions of the faith. Women, read about Mariah Woodworth Eder. Read about the great women of faith. Read about um, Catherine Kuhlman. Re read about John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth. Read about Evan Roberts. Read about these signs and wonders and miracles, people. Because what God did for them, He wants to do for you and more. Perhaps that will make you hungry. Perhaps that will be bigger to you than a 401k plan. Perhaps that will be bigger to you than a promotion at work and a raise at work and more praise and glory from men. Perhaps. Perhaps. The praise of the Lord, the honor that the Lord gives will become more important to you than anything else in this life. And then that's where you begin to get hungry, you see. That's where you begin to get thirsty, see. That's, that's where passion begins to rise in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Passion. 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 I believe that if the Holy Spirit came and measured my passion and my excitement for everything in this life, that my passion and my excitement for Him would way outdo any other expression of happiness, any other expression of excitement than anything else in this life. Can you boast the same? Because I've been around folks that they sit silently when it's time to prayer. It, it, it is, there's no passion rising in their heart. There's no fire in their soul burning in their life. There's no cry of the sun calling out for these things that God's will uh, should be done in the earth. But then all of a sudden, they're sitting in the living room and they're watching the Patriots play and they're jumping off the chair. God said, oh, you shall have no other gods alongside me. And that's a measure of the passion of the heart and the purpose of the soul. What excites you, what moves you inside is what's most real to you. It's what's most important to you. Is the Patriots more important to you? I have to say. <laughs> yeah. 
something, something, unless, unless, I, I want to say this in a way where you can hear it. I'm desperate for you to, I'm desperate for you to feel with me the great need that exists in San Diego, California. The great need that exists here in this region for there to be a glorious church. I'm talking about the glorious church described in the Bible. There's a great need for the glorious church that manifests the presence and power of the living God. Where the signs, wonders, and miracles of Jesus Christ can be seen. Where where the overwhelming glory of heaven is manifested. Where the conviction of the Holy Ghost is felt. Where sins are being revealed to men. Hmm. Lives are being changed under this atmosphere of His divine power. Somehow, somehow, all these distractions, all these other interests, all these other things have got to be removed out of our life. And our hearts and our affections have got to be seated upon things above. Because as long as there's a mixture, there's never going to be the pure river. God, the Holy Ghost, isn't going to come and mix with all of your other ideas. And when He's got you, when He's got you, you'll out-shout me in prayer. You'll out-pray me. You'll out-praise me. You will. You will. That's the fire of God. And I'm saying it that way because I want more fire of God in my life. And that's why I'm saying you'll out-praise me and you'll out-shout me. Huh? When the fire of God burns in your life, you won't be, you won't sit still. Nobody has to be, you know, <laughs> calling you up constantly and reminding you. They, no, you, your heart is there in that place where Father's heart is. You're going into all the world and preaching the gospel. And, 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 and maybe it begins and maybe it starts and it stays there for a very long time. It's just in the framework of your workplace. It's in the framework of the influences of where you live right now. You begin to become a witness of a person who glorifies God in their body because you walk in divine health. I'm going to tell you right now, listen to me. You're not going to walk with divine health when you allow sin in your life. You're not. God also has a place of divine power where we're not constantly being taken taken, taken down by sin. The Lord, the school of the Spirit would teach us how to walk in the ways of righteousness. The school of the Spirit... (laughs) <laughs> you start walking in love, my dear friends, and uh, 99% of all the stuff that goes on in your life that is contrary to God and that belongs to a realm called sin will cease to exist. Just by walking in love, because, you know, the Lord said it, and Paul said it, and it's foundation in the Old Testament, uh, that love works no evil at all, has no, works no ill. <laughs> Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey me. I just want to learn how to love. You want to learn how to love? Well, while you're learning how to love, God's going to teach you how to do miracles. Isn't that amazing? He's going to teach you how to do miracles. He's going to teach you how to walk in divine health to where the sickness comes. No, he can't touch me. Some people tell me that there was a, there was a uh, stomach flu going around. And uh, so last night, I felt this pain come into my stomach. And what I did is I said, you foul spirit of sickness. I command you, go now in Jesus' name. You will not plant your seed in my body. Totally healed. But did that happen overnight? I've done this. I started that long ago. That's why I haven't had walked in any kind of sickness. Do I get attacked by sickness? Absolutely I do. But it gets run off as soon as it comes. Huh? Huh? I might sniffle a couple of times, but that's going to be about it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? I might feel a little pain, but it's going. I'm going to walk into divine health. We're going to glorify God in our body and our spirits. How are we going to do this? We're going to learn. We're going to come in the school of spirit, and the Holy Spirit's going to teach us to walk in all spiritual blessings <laughs> in a heavenly realm. Have you ever read that verse of Scripture? Do you know that that's a promise of God? Do you know it belongs to you? Do you know these things belong to you? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, do you know that? It's such a treasure. Somebody told I said... They asked me, how is it that you know all these verses of Scripture? How is it that you remember all these verses of Scripture? What do you mean, man? That's my bank account. That's my money. That's my treasures. That's my jewels. What are you talking about? You don't know where your treasures are? Of course you know where your treasures are. Of course you know where your treasures are. Of 
course, you know exactly how much money you got, roughly. Huh? Especially those of you who've been saving and saving the account, you're looking at that thing constantly, doing three or four bow downs to it every day. <laughs> huh? Light the incense. Huh? Are you listening to me? It's true. It doesn't have to be that way. It can be consecrated unto God. I know a woman, know of a woman, she had $42 million and it all belonged to the Lord. And she was keeping it for him. <laughs> a great man of God that I know went into her neighborhood and God had told him to go in there and do a mass evangelism crusade and uh, she had no interest in giving any of God's money to help out the crusade because she was keeping it for him. And she was already old, so she couldn't get a keeper. She wasn't going to be a keeper for much longer. I don't know where that $42 million is going to end up at. No worries. The meeting was still had about 150,000, 200,000 people in it. And the Lord paid for it without her finances. But what happens when all that you have belongs to the Lord? And it's always there, His for the asking. Hallelujah. School of the Spirit, I teach you to be able to trust God. You don't feel like, wait a minute, I can't give that away because that's my living. The widow, who will be talked about throughout the ages to come, did not have that thought. She was not as bright and as smart as you are. <laughs> she, didn't, she wasn't sitting there calculating, oh no, if I give this in the offering, it is my living, I will not be able to eat all week. Her heart was captivated by the presence of the Lord, captivated by her covenant with God. And she brought all that she had. She said she gave more than anybody. She be talked about. That woman, that woman, that widow. Come on, man. I, don't you want to be talked about in the halls of glory? I do. I'm not being the nosebleed section when it comes to praising God when we're gathered around the crystal sea. Come on. Dear people, there's a great need for Holy Ghost churches, churches that are filled with the presence of the Lord, churches where everybody knows how to yield and walk in the Spirit. You're not going to, look, you're not going to, look, I, you're falling, some of you are falling asleep on me and, and dozing off and looking here and looking there. And you're thinkers, you're just thinkers, thinking, think, 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 think. And that is, that is, Steals all the passion. And as long as you're thinking, you're never going to do anything in God. You're not. You won't. You will never know how to function in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about you coming into the school of the Spirit and being touched by very touchy-feely things that the Holy Ghost wants to touch you with, like love and joy. You can feel that. You can feel the love, and you can feel the joy, and you can feel the goodness. Praise God. And in that dimension... Learning how to receive from him, learning how to interact with him. Then, in the midst of the church, you can do fundamentally, you can do what you were born of God to do. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to go back to Genesis 1 2 real quick. Men, you and I were created to walk around in the fullness of God's glory with God himself walking with us. Sin came into the world. Darkness entered in because of the rebellion and the will of men. God, through Christ Jesus, came and drove out the darkness. Now, you and I have a decision that we have to make. Are we going to push out the darkness? Are we going to push away all of those influences that, it, that, that came in to the garden that destroyed Adam's walk with God and that will also destroy your walk with God? that blocked his way from accessing, from receiving, from entering in, will also block, block your access and your ability to receive. Here is all this abundance of all divine provision for everything that we have need of, already given, given freely, but you're going to have to have the fire of God hit you because things have got to be burned off of you. Things have got to be melted down in your life. There's areas where you've got, to, you've got to be willing to let the Lord break you. You've been taught wrong. You've believed wrong things. You've made wrong decisions. You've lived wrong lives. Come into the school of spirit. Start over. 
I believe tonight that God would give you an opportunity that you can live different from this day forward. I mean, I'm going to ask you a question. If you could live different from this day forward, would you? The opportunity is given to you. And that demands change on your part. Because I'm telling you, the resources of heaven and the power of God is available to you to be able to do that. But I mean, you've got to wake up in the morning and say, I'm not doing anything the same. I'm not praying the same. I'm, I'm going to walk around and say, Lord, I want to I I feed glory. Lord, I want to touch heaven. Lord, I want to know the reality of who you are. I'm tired of playing games. Forgive me for playing games with you, Lord. Just playing, offering up these nonsense prayers that have absolutely no witness that you've even heard it. Anytime worship in the Old Testament took place that God acknowledged it and heard it, a fire fell. I don't want to continue on in a life where there is no witness that you've heard it, no response from heaven. I want everything about my life to be different. I'll just start by this, by this saying, Lord, I'm hungry for you. I'm tired of living a religious life that where that you're an idea and a concept that I talk about and read about, but there's no evidence of your life in my life. There, people can't even see your love in me. They can't even see your joy in me. They can't see your glory in me. I lay hands on the sick and nobody gets healed. I don't even have the ability to rise up in faith and begin to flow and operate in the things which the Holy Ghost is trying to, to, to fill me up with in the manifestation of the Spirit. You just get serious with God. That's why I say go and read some of these books of, of revivalists of the past. Let it stir you. What God's done for one, He's done for others. I mean, that's what I did. <laughs> and I was born in revival. I was raised in revival. I've been around people uh, uh, who flow and operate in the Holy Ghost all my life. I've always had a stirring in my life. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord really used those books that I read of other men and women of God. I'm like, I'd just be in the midst of reading it. Go, Lord, I want this too. I'd fold the book down, fall. I'd close the book, fall on my face. I'd read about two chapters and I probably wouldn't even read two chapters. I'd read a half a chapter, fall on my face and go, oh God, what a miserable wretch. Oh, God, do I even know you? <laughs> you know, just getting hungry, just getting desperate. Do something, Father, in my life. Come, send your fire on me right now. Yes. I can't take it any longer. Now, something that happens when you get like, when, now all of a sudden you're in, now you're getting into that scripture that says, command you me, says the Lord. Now, that's because that's a real passion. You see, that's truth. That's purity. Now, you, I'm going to tell you right now, ready or not, fire's going to fall. When, that's, when that kind of hunger, when that kind of truth. And see, that's really what the Lord has done. When, he, when we were born of the Spirit, He gave us the capacity, as it were, to go back into the garden, to go back into the realms of the heavenly. Because that's really what the paradise means. That's what the garden means. It's a heavenly realm. To go back in that heavenly realm and be able to walk with Him. And not get distracted by the sorrows and sadness and sighing and pain and sickness and disease and lust and, and, and sin and iniquity that exists in the world around us. Not to get drawn into that thing, but to be captivated by Him. To come and enjoy the, the joys of His presence, the pleasures that are at His right hand. That's why you were born again, to walk with God. And the Lord gave us then... In that capacity of being born of the Spirit, this wellspring that he talks about in John 4, verse 23. He gives us a wellspring so that we can now worship God in the Holy Ghost. And in truth, and now we get to begin to participate as a glorious church, fundamentally as these who are able to offer up praise or right unto the Lord, where we're able to be filled with the Spirit. I'm not, if you try to worship God and you're not filled with the Spirit, you know what? I'm going to be yawning. I was like, give me that microphone, man. <laughs> Take your place in the silent section. God has, has filled us and wants to fill us more into a place that we can't contain it. And so, 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 so can't contain it. It comes busting out of us like rivers of living water. It's not like, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Where's my water? Where's my water? Take a sip of water. People are the thirstiest people for water. Amazing 
How much sipping going on? I preached 26 sermons in Japan. Three translators were the first two completely out. The third one, I wasn't going to wear him out. He wasn't sipping water either. He was going mute. He was going mute. Kind of find out later, he was actually, he's a Japanese American. Japanese raised in America. Missionary in Nepal. And he knew how to receive. So I was constantly, I was having to deal with the fact that we're shut down for a while. We were shut down for a while because he was going mute. He was caught away in the glory of God, weeping, just caught away in the glory. When your interests are wrapped up in the world, you can't receive that. You can't know that. You can't know that. You think, what's wrong with those folks? They are emotional. They're very expressionist. I'm not that way. I'm very calm. Oh, yeah, you're that way when you're patriots or whoever or whatever excites you and gets you happy. Yeah, you're that way. Whatever is real to you, whatever is really meaningful to you, touches you deeply. See, the Holy Ghost is real to me. He's meaningful. He touches me the deepest of anything. The deepest of anything. I'm in the school of the Spirit. I'm walking around being taught of the Holy Ghost. I'm being taught of God. He's schooling me how to take my place in a holy nation as a royal priest as a treasured person of God, as God's own inheritance. That's what Paul said in Ephesians 1.19. 118, he said, I pray that the Spirit of wisdom, that Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give to you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the eyes of your understanding be open. In other words, that your eyes be open just like Elijah's servant's eyes were open, so he could see that more was with them than were that was than with the other guys. More was on their side than on the side of the enemy more with us than are with them. That your eyes would be open so that you could see and understand and know the inheritance that God has in you. He's put a treasure on the inside of us. In these earthen vessels, He's put a treasure, the excellency and power of God. Yeah, that's what Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to come to know that. You cannot, you cannot come to know that. You cannot come to discover this. You cannot grow mature in it until you come to the school of spirit. <clears throat> Look, you're newborn babes. Can newborn babes make heaven? Can you just live in your problems and live basically not making an impact on, on, on men's lives, not advancing the kingdom of God and make heaven? Yes. God loves his babies. But I'm not a, a baby tin in church. I'm like, I'm like a, a church about growing people up, coming into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. In fact, he said that's why he gave apostles, prophets, and pastors, and teachers. He gave us for the purpose of perfecting you. Amen. And that means to mature you and to build you up for the work of the ministry. And the maturing is very pointed there to the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. And he commands me to demand it. He commands me to do everything that I can do to make disciples out of you. He's telling me to go make a disciple out of nations. I'm going to make a disciple out of Japan. Japan's an unreached people group. I cannot even believe it. I'm telling you right now, the Lord gave me the keys to Japan as much as He did to the nation of Nepal. He spoke to me and said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And I give you the keys. And what you bind shall be bound. And what you loose shall be loose. But I feel the same way about you. I want to see you liberated. I want to see you being willing and obedient. Because God, the Holy Ghost, is talking to you, but you've got to be willing. Because you can sit there and go, you're talking, you're talking about me. That is the most demonic thing. He's talking about me. He doesn't like me. That is, ex that is very satanic. That is the seed of the enemy. That means that you have the ability to hear the demon spirits instead of the Holy Spirit. That means that there is a real need of the work of grace in your life. Huh? It's true. Things need to be tore down so that they can be built. Things need to be uprooted so that planting can come. How's that going to happen? Fire God. 
Fire of God. Only the fire of God can burn up all of those deceitful things. His word is like a fire. Huh. Can burn up those wrong ideas, those wrong decisions that have taken, found safe harbor in your life and has, and has come into a part in the framework of your character and your actions and your thinking processes. It's got to be broken. It's a stronghold that's got to be broken. To just come back to a place of complete yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. The first love. Like when you first was touched by him. Oh, Lord, Jesus, I'll do anything for you. I'll go anywhere. You don't know nothing. I'm telling you right now, the power of God was radically revealed in my life when I didn't really know anything. I mean, really about the dynamics of all that God wanted to do in my life. But I'm, I'm so thankful that I didn't lose that as I was growing and maturing. Because I've been growing and maturing right. I've been growing and maturing in a state of hungering and thirsting for Him. He filled me with the spirit of truth. No lie can be in me. No deception can be in me. And when I see deception working in God's people, it's alarming. It speaks of another spirit. That's why you'll hear me say, be filled with the Spirit, because I believe that when you're filled with the Spirit, every other spirit has to go. I'm going to tell you right now, the spirit of heaviness is not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of darkness. And that seed, you can send it away from your life right now. You can renounce every trouble right now. It can be broken off of your life. Let your heart be filled with a hunger and thirst. Don't let your head be filled with the praises of men. And the ideas and concepts of a world that is separated from God. Especially you guys that are in academics. Holy Ghost men, men who had great authority over demon spirits. Let, let me just tell you, men that function like this in their, in the day, in their day. Um, Shambach, you've heard of, most people have heard of Shambach. And um, a, a couple of other famous revivalists were all gathered around this, per, this woman, completely crazy, demon-possessed. They brought her from a mental institution. I'm pretty sure it was Houston, Texas. Of course, this is live via video. And, you know, there's other people that might know it a little bit different. But sure, it's pretty, pretty sure it was Houston, Texas. Great men of God were gathered around this woman. It's a real event, recorded event, actually happened. They brought this woman from a mental institution. She was completely insane. They had been praying with her all afternoon. It was an, a, a meeting that A.A. Allen was doing. And they'd gathered around her and they cried and they commanded and they demanded and they were going after casting out this devil. Bless their heart. They weren't going to give up. Praise God for that. There's a lot of people just give up too soon. It takes boldness not to give up. It takes boldness to know who you are and stand there and command the things that God has commanded to take place. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, uh, and they got, really got nowhere. A.A. Allen walked into the building. As soon as he walked into the front door, the woman went wild. As soon as he walked in, it was a big building. He was having a huge meeting. As soon as he walked in, he saw what was going on. He said, hey, devil, this is A.A. Allen. Go, leave her now. And, and walked on into the ready room. The devil completely went out of her insanity, completely left her. She was completely normal in her right mind. And went around for uh, years testifying of the deliverance, the great miracle that God works. Of course, there's plenty of... Uh, of medical, rector, medical records to validate it. When a man knows who he is in God, when a person takes, takes on their assignment in a covenant relationship, hey, devil, this is A.A. A. Allen. Leave her, go from her now. And that was it. God wants you to come into that realm. You're going to have to come into the school of the Spirit to come in that realm. Your sadness, your despondency, you're caught up in your circumstances, caught up in your problems, caught up in the cares of this life. Ain't going to do nothing for you, man but calls you to go into a prison that will ultimately make your heart hard and your life bitter and insensitive to God the more years you pour into it. And so you've, people have seen me just like pleading with them. I mean, pleading, just pleading. I've watched people in the, in the, in the throes of decisions. There's people that aren't here tonight. I, I said to them, I said by the Spirit, tonight's your last night to make a decision. They acted like I was talking to someone else. I knew what God was saying. I could have fallen down sobbing because of their despondency to God. But there was years of despondence, years 
of not hearing the Holy Ghost, years of, of, of being hard, hard, unwilling to hear the voice of the Lord. See, first they've got to be willing. So people are, they've got ideas in their mind. They've got ideas and concepts and beliefs that keep them from being willing when the voice of the Lord comes because they don't recognize the voice of the Lord. And they harden themselves against God. I could have fallen down sobbing, oh God, I see their end, oh Lord. And just gone over to them and I could have folded my hands and I could have been on my knees begging them, saying, please, can you hear, please? I could have been crying and repenting for them. It would have done no good. It was their last opportunity for them to respond with their own heart. If the Holy Ghost would have had place there, they would have said yes, they would have been tender. He long since left. He long since left. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Samson and he knew it not. Samson going round and around, grinding meal for the Philistines, getting nowhere with his, with his hair cut off and his eye plucked out is very symbolic of a church, a backslidden church. It once knew God with the greatness and the power of God, but right now it's nothing but a shame and a reproach. It's powerless. And all it does is work under the yoke of Satan and create more misrepresentation. Is that scary? It's scary. I have this great passion. I've got this great desire. I saw Jesus. I mean, I didn't see him. Well, I have seen him. I mean, I haven't seen him face to face like this, but I've seen him in a vision. And that's just been recently. I've all my life wanted to see the Lord. And so I spent so much time saying I haven't seen him that I've got to be reminded. No, you did. But I want to see him face to face. I want to face see him like this and touch him. But the Holy Ghost comes and reveals him to a way and to us in a way that goes beyond that. I feel his presence right now. He's here right now. I know that he goes with me. I mean, uh, a man of God told me, he said, when you go after the lost, you get God's attention. When you go after the unreached people of groups, you really get his attention. And I found that to be true. And I love going, I love going like down my line. That others may hear the gospel, the power of preaching the gospel. Don't do anything. You listen to me. Do not do anything, but recognize the power of the name of Jesus and the simplicity of his word and the simplicity of the presentation of the gospel. Not all this other stuff. Not all this other stuff. Because it's Jesus who does the works. And he does the works because we proclaim the gospel. If I proclaim the gospel, you know, when I preach in crusades, I, I minister under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And when I'm preaching in crusades, I only get about 30 minutes of inspiration to preach. The rest of it signs wonders and miracles. But it has to be following the word of God. It has to be in that context because Jesus goes everywhere confirming his word with signs following. I don't want the activity of demon spirits. I don't want something less. Model yourself after Catherine Coleman. Model yourself after Mariah Woodworth Etter. Listen to their sermons. Listen to how they preach. Look how they did it. Look because they got results like no modern contemporaries have. Are you listening to me? Model yourself after the people of the past who did great signs and wonders because the contemporaries today haven't, haven't even touched the, anointed, uh, the anointing they had, the realm of glory that they had stepped into. Come on, I just, I'm just calling you to come and step into the pages of the Bible. Step into a realm of divine glory that is only possible because of hungering and thirsting in your life. And you're going to have to make choices about the things that you're dieting on. People who are involved in strife, who are involved in criticism, that is so contrary to the Holy Ghost, it completely cuts them off from being able to come under very, uh, any, hardly any of the influence of the Holy Spirit, and by and large, no influence of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you why. I'm talking about the School of Spirit here tonight. You're in the School of Spirit. Let me tell you why. Because... It is so anti-God, first and foremost, it's every evil thing exists in that realm. That's what the Lord says. And more importantly, they don't even recognize the iniquity, the demon power that they're participating with, so they don't ask the Lord to forgive them. They don't repent. And then the Lord, and the Lord you know what? I'm going to tell you, the Lord's gracious. The Lord's gracious. You're repenting. You're asking for forgiveness, right? Forgiveness. Oh, Lord, forgive me. You know what you're going to hear him do? You know what you're going to hear him say? He said, that's all well and fine, but I expect you to repent. That's what you're going to hear him say. Just keep asking him forgiveness, because I'm telling you right now, before long, you're going to hear him say, I ask, I'm, I'm not, that's all well and fine, I want you to repent. Repent means you're never going to do it again. Repent says you hate it, you turn your back on it. 
So as long as there's not repentance, there's really a, a, a long, there's a giant gulf between you and the Holy Ghost. There's only so much that you can receive from the Lord. I'm inviting you into the school of spirit. Hopefully you'll get hungry and thirsty enough to know God and to walk with God that when you're at that point of finger point and accusation, criticism, strife, being a part of any, anything that belongs to competition, my kids are better than your kids' nonsense. Are you with me? My stuff's better than your stuff. That kind of nonsense. Are you listening to me? Yes. You'll recognize, I just went and agreed with demon spirits and desensitized myself to the Holy Ghost. Well, if you'll repent, if you'll acknowledge it and repent, it's easy to hook back up with the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to come into the school of spirit. I hear, I, hear one, I hear somebody's child crying. They need me to go lay hands on them. What, what I really need is I need, we're, gonna, we're going to grab a hold. I'm going to grab a hold of a realm in God for you. And then I'm going to identify some people. We're going to lay hands on people, impart grace into them so that they can do an awesome children's ministry, especially for long church times, to where that when a child becomes upset in their spirit, there's, there's upset in the physical body, stomach ache, need for food, and then there's upset in the spirit. You can lay hands on them and give them peace. Wow. Isn't that cool? And then if they need a cookie and some, some juice or whatever, you can give them that too. But you can give them the cookie and juice and they're still the holy terror. No, an unholy terror. Huh? Walk around scratching, biting. Ah! And then you got to discipline them. Now they're all upset because you transgressed their will. So I said, how can you stand and do that kind of work? I do that work all the time. It's easier to take from kids. It's harder to take from adults. This meeting is not going like I thought it was going to go. <laughs> I want you to hear the cry of Jesus' heart. I hope it's the cry of your heart. Look with me, please, in the very important verse of Scripture in Matthew chapter 9. And, and, of course, the context in Matthew chapter 9 is verse 35 and 34, 35. So just go over there with me quickly. Oh, God. Now, let me just tell you something. The Lord recently told me that he gave me a special ability that I really didn't know I had. And I started exercising that special ability recently and he confirmed that I had a special ability. And so I'm going to use it here. And I'm going to use it in a way that goes beyond um, any way that I have operated in this pastorally in the past. I'm going to call fire God down on you. And it's going to be both good and bad. It's going to be good for everybody who wants absolute and total complete change in their life and complete conformity to the will of God. It's going to be bad for those who want it only partial. Huh? It's going to be bad for those who didn't want change. It's going to be bad. Those of you who want change, you're going to be rejoicing because change just came easy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I, was, I got to Japan and... The Lord said, I want you to call a fire of God. He said, I want you to call my fire down upon the church of Japan. And I'm like, whoa. And he said, this is what I've seen here. And so I, so I started doing it. And this, the woman, uh, a woman who's a well-known prophetess of South Korea, who's head over Christ of the Nations Korea, she comes to me and she says, the Lord sent you to call fire down on the church of Japan. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, it's a special gift. I didn't realize I had that. It would be in that unique way. I mean, to command the fire to fall. So I just want you to get ready. I, I've, I've been passionate. I've been laboring in something that I'm now starting to reap now. I've been laboring. I've labored. I've been earnest and passionate about seeing a glorious church. 
A glorious church cannot function where one or two people do all the stuff. That's not a glorious church. That that's pretty much the status quo where you've got one or two really gifted people and the more gifted they are. And in this modern time, the more gifted they are around, you know, basic entertainment and presentation, the more successful. I know powerful, gifted people in signs, wonders, and miracles and their churches aren't that big. But not to worry. Catherine Kuhlman came out of a community of 1,200 people out of a little Methodist church that if it was jam-packed full could only hold 100 and there was probably only 30 there when she was visited by the Lord and she changed her generation. Mm -hmm. So it's not about how, you know, you can't limit what God's going to do based upon the total number of people. Huh? God's just looking for a ready, available heart who wants nothing but Him. That's all. That's all. Who's willing to completely surrender everything to do the will of the Father. And then that, he's going to come and fill that heart. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start calling the fire of God upon your life, down upon your life in a unique way, so the spiritual blindness won't be there anymore. You're going to have to deal with yourself. You're going to have to deal with your problems. Because, you know, a, a pastor or a preacher, somebody can try to point them out. God, you know, I said, Lord, they won't listen to me. He said, don't worry, they didn't listen to me either. <laughs> don't feel lonely. I mean, when you tell the Lord, Lord, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. He just look, if I was there, I wouldn't be getting about the same place you're getting. I'm like, oh, thank you, Father. I'm just encouraged. I'm in good company. He said, there's got to be change. You cannot force the will of people. You can lead them into a place. You can tell them. You can pronounce my word. But they have to be willing. When people aren't willing, nothing's going to happen. But just continue to labor. Continue to sow. Don't weary in well-doing because you shall reap. And I'm telling you, I am coming into a place right now for those things that I prophesied and believed God for and been passionate for and going to be more passionate for, for a glorious church to arise, which is this. It's where at least a significant number of the people in the meeting know how to respond to the Holy Ghost because he's giving to every man he is dividing individually to every person, even right now, and has always been doing so, in some demonstration of power, whether it's the word of knowledge or the working of miracles. It's just that nobody or very few people even know how to respond or receive from the Holy Ghost. But yet, yet, yet you, you tell folks that, and there, there is a mental block. It's a mental block. It's a blindness of heart and mind. They don't believe that. Because if they believe that, then they would become really hungry and desperate and go, whoa, what? I don't know how to receive him, the Holy Ghost. I don't know how to yield to him. And then you begin to cry out to God. You begin to fast and pray. You begin to lift up your voice. And Father would come melt, break you, melt you, mold you, fill you. Amen. And it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't take three years. It wouldn't take three years. It's a block. It's a blockage. It's a hardness. It's an unwillingness to hear. God told me I can call the fire down on it now. With an authority that I've never had before, so just get ready. I love going to unreached people groups. I love going to different places to preach the gospel because every time I go, the Lord gives me something that I didn't have before because I need something I didn't have before because I'm getting myself in a situation where I need more. You know, I've never been to Japan before, right? When I first went to Nepal, I'd never been to Nepal. The Lord gave me an ability and divine grace to do the work in Nepal. And, I, and the good thing about it, you, once you get it, you never lose it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's always yours. When I went to Papua New Guinea the first time, I needed things that I didn't have. I mean, the witch doctors are like, blah, 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 doing all their crazy thing, you know, jumping around. They're trying to curse me from afar. You know, there's like 20, 30,000 people in the building. I mean, in the, in the meeting. And... Uh, and the, the birds are, they got the birds coming and they brought in a flock of birds. You know, birds are like, <laughs> the birds are dive bombing the people. It's crazy nonsense. And then the power of God started moving and bang, they went out and birds left. <laughs> <laughs> and when they pay attention to them, just moving in the anointing and the capacity that God gives us to do the work that he, we, he wants us to do because we got ourselves in a situation to represent him. Well, I went to Japan. Papa gave me some things. And, 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 
And I'm just so excited about it. I mean, I'm so excited about what God's going to do. I'm laying claim. I will have this week in Jesus' name the property at the corner of Carroll Canyon Road and in, in Interstate 15. It's, I'm taking hold of it for the kingdom of God. I want the whole thing. I don't want part of it. I want the whole thing. I mean, I'm just seizing it for the kingdom of God. Because there's like 80,000 square foot of building space there. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to fill it up with 2,500 people who don't know the Lord on Sunday morning. I'm going to watch the wind of God blow and sort out, folks. And God's going to raise up an army of people who know how to respond to the Holy Ghost, who aren't stuck in a ditch of, of self-pity, aren't stuck in a ditch of religion, aren't stuck in a, a ditch of self-satisfaction, aren't stu stuck in a, 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 a ditch of hardness. They're going to be soft and pliable to God. And Father's going to fill them. And they go in there and you're going to see Glorious Church. And I want that to be you too. I want that to be you. And there's people in here tonight that I know it's going to be you. I know it's going to be you. Because there's nothing that you're hanging on to that you won't surrender to the Lord. Nothing. I know there's many people in here right now. If the Lord told you to go empty out your bank account, sell your car, sell your house, and give it all into the kingdom, you'd do it right now. I know that. And I know there's people in here that would not do that. That have to have, that have to have the fleece dry and the ground wet. That have to have the fleece wet and the ground dry, and the ground dr wet again and the fleece dry. And then they'd have to have the sun replace the moon, the moon replace the sun. And then after that, they got to have three or four. And then they're still not going to do it probably. Because at the end of that, then the Lord's going to say, "It's all right. You don't have to do it." And they're going to feel relieved. Yeah, the Lord did tell me, proved that he did tell me to do that, but it, before when I was ready to do it, it was just like he said to Abraham, touch not the lad. <laughs> no, when you start walking with the Lord, you instantaneously just give it up. Just give it up. Now you're yielded. Now you can receive. Now God doesn't have to talk to you about a year, for a year, uh, about being willing to give an interpretation of tongues. But right at that moment, you instantly receive. Whew. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Of course, there has to be tongues for you to be able to give an interpretation of tongues, isn't there? Huh? And, and now in a modern day church, you cannot supposed to speak in tongues in church. So how can you ever give an interpretation of tongues? When you can't speak in tongues in church, we're all confused. We need to come into the school of spirit and learn how to do it God's way. God's going to have a glorious church. These are the last days. People, I'm going to announce to you something here. These are the last days. God's going to have a glorious church. God's going to have a people full of joy all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Huh? We see some of the poorest people on the face of the earth when we go to Nepal. They're so poor. And they're so full of joy. They have nothing. They live in such poverty. So happy. You've got so much, many of you, and you're so sad. Yeah. Why? That much has displaced Jesus, mm. has displaced a relationship with the Holy Ghost that would continually satisfy your soul and be in you like a river flowing out. Supplying you with all the good things of heaven. And oh, what a wonderful thing living around the river of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody else sick in here? Who's sick in here? Who all has sickness or diseases in your body? Did you raise your hand? Sickness and diseases are going right. Look at me over here. How are you doing? Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this infection to go out of your lungs. To dry out right now. Your mama got, your mama got her back healed this morning, didn't she? Um, no, it was Friday. <laughs> you need to confer with your mother. She got her back healed this morning. She calls me up on the phone. She got her back healed this morning. I'm trying to build your faith, honey. Even if she got her back healed on Friday, the same Jesus that healed her back on Friday. 
is going to heal you now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let me just read this to you first. I'm going to read this to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who's anybody here having troubles with that stomach flu? Anybody here with a stomach flu? Well, I'm telling you right now, I arrest a stomach flu. Amen. And I make you immune to it right now. Amen. The stomach flu, that virus, has no power or authority over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, somebody says, can you do that? Yes. As much as we can command you to be healed in Jesus' name. If I command you to be healed, you're going to have to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Well, we're from the United States of America. <laughs> now we're here in America. Nobody can command us to do anything. We're all free. You're not. You're a slave. You're either a slave to sin and society or you're a slave to God. It is a wonderful thing to be God's servant. <laughs> He's a good master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good master. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just quickly read this verse of Scripture. Is it getting late? Oh, you know, I... I So glad that you're not ruled by the idol called time. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, he's really out there in left field now. He's talking about an idol time. When you go into a church, look in a church. Facing the pulpit, the minister, at the highest position in that building will be a clock. It's not up there facing the people. So it's not for the people to keep up and keep track of time. It's for the pastor or the minister to keep track of time. I brought that thing down from this high place a long time ago. <laughs> I learned to preach from people like Paul. I'm actually in the same church that Paul was in. Paul was a long time preaching. That's what Scripture says. Paul was a long time preaching. And there was a boy sitting in a windowsill. And it was not a great manifestation, but it being about midnight, the boy fell down, fell asleep and fell down from a second story. And Paul went and took him up dead. He was dead. When he picked him up and life came back into him, they all went back up rejoicing, praised God, the dead had been raised to life again in the meeting. Amen. <laughs> And the scripture says he continued on until morning. <laughs> Those are breakthrough meetings. Those are breakthrough meetings. When you think about the great revivals that took place in the Appalachian Mountains, Cane Ridge Revival, other revivals, up in Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, those are coal miners. Those coal miners, I know about the lifestyle of coal miners. I lived up there. Dad did missionary ministry work up there. Had a church up there for a while. Did tent revivals there. That culture is you have to get up about 4 o'clock in the morning. Because you got it. But by the time you get to the mine, you need to be in the mine by 5, 30, 6 o'clock. You go down in the mine and you work eight to ten hours. It's usually ten hours. Well, during that great revival that everybody likes to, those great revivals that everybody likes to talk about, those revivals that ultimately the phrase was coined, revivals born after midnight, where they literally, the power of God came, flooded the place, they'd be there till one, two o'clock in the morning. Those were coal miners. How did they do that? 
They left the meeting one, two o'clock in the morning and then got up at four o'clock in the morning. There's nothing but supernatural. There's nothing but miraculous. But they touched heaven and changed earth. Some folks just want to sing about it, touching heaven, changing earth. But then there's other people who want to live it, touching heaven, changing earth. And it's not some legalistic thing because then all you got is a bunch of saints come grumbling in. <laughs> We're ever in revival meetings. I haven't had much sleep. And I get this way when I'm tired. You're that way when you're not tired too, most of the time. I've discovered that people that get gr grumpy when they're tired, they don't wait when they're not tired. Because there's a realm in which we live that goes beyond the state, physical state in which we find ourselves. There is a realm of provision that comes supernaturally supplied by the Spirit of Christ. Wonderful realm to live in. I wonder if there would be a people in San Diego County who would be so touched by the Father's heart that they would begin to spend all night in prayer for the lost. That the lost would be no longer held in a prison of mind-blinding spirits, but all of a sudden being liberated out of that place would come under the influence of the Holy Ghost who would bring great conviction into their life. And suddenly, they would be conscious and aware that they stood in the presence of God and that their sin was an offense. And the only way to get rid of that sin was to call upon the name of Jesus. What a wonderful conversion when you know that your life is filled with sin and the blood of Jesus washes it all away. And immediately you feel that conversion, you feel that sin, you feel that separation that is on your life completely and totally removed from off your life. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. Good sermons can't do that. Good singing can't do that. Holy Ghost can do that. However, the right kind of singing, the right kind of worship, and the right kind of preaching facilitates what the Holy Ghost wants to do. Can, I want you to hear Jesus' heart. Then we're going to close. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about on the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he, verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He's looking at the masses of humanity. He's only able to touch so many, you see? He's one man confined to time and space and the limitations of the physical world. He's only able to touch so many people. And look at his ministry. Look at what he's doing. Quickly, just hold your finger there, and, and I want you to go over to Matthew chapter 11. And I want you to look at verse 4, because I, I want you to look at the works of Jesus. I want you to look at what Jesus is doing, because he's calling you and me to come and follow him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at this. Jesus answered John's disciples, who said, and go, said, go to John and tell him what things you hear and see. Verse 5, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached. The dead that he was raising up that day aren't even mentioned in the Bible. Just two people are mentioned in the Bible that stand out to most people. That's the boy at Nain and Lazarus. There's many more were dead raised. If, all that sh if everything that Jesus did and all the books that should be written concerning the things he did uh, was written, I suppose John said the whole world could not contain the books. Huh? Yeah. This is what he did in one day. This is what he did in one day. They came. John said, go over there and see if he's the Christ or should we look for another in that same hour, that same day, at that same time. Look at what happened. Wow. That's church. That's church. That's a glorious church. That's a glorious church having no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. It's a glorious church that has the presence of Jesus. The church is the body of Christ, the manifest presence of Jesus, doing the work and the ministry of Jesus. The church is the fullness of God right here on the earth. That's what Paul said, Ephesians 1, 24, 23, rather. I can go on and on and on all night concerning this. When will it, and I, and I, I beg you will, you, will you let this become important to you? I beg you, would you let, would you let, would you let, the will of the Father and the purposes that Christ Jesus died, will you let them become very, very important to you? 
to so that Father's will could be done in the earth? Could we, could we, we, would we be willing to cease from our own will and quit playing patty cake religion and pretend I'll do my will no more? Now here comes the prophet. You know? That's me. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, that's me. Because the prophet, said, the prophet shows, his, shows God's people their sins. He does. And when we say, when we're saying, Father, I don't want my will, I want your will. And then we continue to walk in our own will stubbornly and defiantly. Then, you know, that's just been simply patty cake religion. Pretend. We, you and I, we have the spirit of truth to do the truth. And I, I pray tonight, and, and I'm calling the fire God down upon you. So you're going to have to deal with these things now. Hallelujah. You're going to have to deal with these things. This is church. Here's church. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The dead hear. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus says in John 14, 12, anyone who believes on me shall do these works that I do and greater works than these. Anyone. Now, in that statement, he doesn't qualify the believer. He didn't say, if you are a believer, then you will do these works. It's a possibility. It's an opportunity. It's a call. It clearly breaks it free from just being 12 apostles, 70 others also, 120 on the day of Pentecost, one generation isolated at a particular time 2,000 years ago. Anyone. He opens it up to everyone. If this Bible, if this Word of God is relevant, to you and me, then what he said is relevant for the opportunity and that we have right now. Yes. But what are you going to do with it? That's what you have to think about. Let me tell you. Loved ones, family of God, will never be a reality until it becomes the most important thing to you. If it's just one of the things you would like to do, it ain't going to ever happen. It's to be the definition of your life. If you abide in me, Jesus said, definition of your life. And my word abides in you. In other words, what I've said in my word is all that you live for. Then you'll ask whatever you want, and it'll be done for you. Then this is going to become a reality. Come abide in me. Without me, you can do nothing. You have to come and abide in me just like a branch abides in the vine. That kind of dependency that kind of absolute identity. There is no other value. There is no other meaning. There, there is no other way. That branch, that branch can't live anywhere else, can't mean anything or do anything or be anything. Reality of it is, <laughs> outside of a Jesus, you and I don't exist. You don't, you don't even exist. You don't exist. People who do not know Jesus don't even exist to God. He that has Christ Jesus, he that hath the Son has life. He that has not Christ Jesus doesn't even exist. They're dead while they live. Dead. Cut off from life. We found life in our existence in Christ. I can do the things I could do and live the life that I live because I live in him. What I, do I believe about me? Jesus. What do I believe about you? Jesus. I see the opportunity that you had to live in Jesus. And I'm not going to talk about you. And I'm not going to discuss your problems and your issues and what you think and your perceptions. Because they're, they're meaningless. I'll discuss to you God's answers. His solutions. His call. His gift. Hallelujah. Listen to the heart of Jesus. Listen. Be healed. Be blessed. Be blessed. No cult in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to Jesus. Can you hear Jesus' heart? Is it your heart? Will you let it be your heart? It's not the baby's heart. The baby's just a baby. 
Wah, wah. My needs. The baby is constantly caught up in all kinds of a mess. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, where there's strife and division among you, don't you walk as mere men, babes in Christ, walking carnally. Hmm? There's a place now where we can begin to grow and mature, and we're not working for Dad. We're doing His work. It's a big difference. It's a big difference between doing His work and working for Him. <laughs> I'm going in His stead. I'm in His place and in His position. And He loves it that way. There's a covenant relationship going on. There's a partnership. He says, what you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. It's a covenant. I'm, I have all authority in heaven and earth. You go for me. Now, what you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Keys of kingdom. Keys of kingdom all based on the revelation of who Jesus is. What you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. It's a partnership. It ain't going to work any other way. It's the way it works. The angel of the Lord could have told Cornelius and his house everything that Peter said, and it might have been even more profound because the angel was saying it. That's not the way it works. It says sin for Peter. He's been anointed. He's been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's been given divine ability to preach the gospel so that you can have the miracle of conversion. Wow. You've been anointed to go preach the gospel so people can have the miracle of conversion. You're going to have to get over being rejected. You're going to have to be get over being persecuted. You're going to have to be willing to go take your cross, take up your cross and follow Jesus and be willing to be crucified. Huh? You know what makes a, you know what makes a person do great exploits in battle? You know what's behind a person doing great exploits in battle? They've already written out their last will and testament. They've resigned themselves to die. They're not cleaving to their life or holding on to their life. They just give it all on the battlefield. We're talking to you, soldiers of Jesus Christ, not those who do not entangle themselves with the cares of this life, that they may please him who has called them to be a soldier. Amen. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to cry out with me this prayer that Jesus describes right here. In verse 38, then he said unto the disciples, he said, the harvest truly is plenteous. It's true today. Listen, I want, listen to me. Today on the earth are more people right now in existence than have existed since creation combined. Today, there's 7 billion people on the face of the earth. If the harvest was plenteous then, tell me what it is right now. So, but the laborers are few. Well, what kind of laborers does the Lord want? He wants these kind of laborers. He wants the Jesus kind of laborers who can say, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the broken in heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound, to declare the acceptable day of the Lord. That's the anointing. He said, you receive power from on high. The same anointing that Jesus received, He's given to us, same baptismal measure. These are the kind of laborers that God demands. If you're going to do that, then you're going to have to come into the school of the Spirit. Elisha came into the school of Elijah. And because he came into the school of Elijah, he was awarded to do twice that which Elijah was able to do in the realms of the kingdom of God, in the realms of the heavenly, living in heaven, living and operating in heavenly realm. You and I are supposed to come into the school of the Spirit, which is the school of Jesus, and he's given to us an immeasurable more ability because he gives not double, but greater. He just gives a greater. And it's a multiplicative. It's not a double. It's a greater. It's a greater than. But it's got to be more important to you than anything else. Because if it's not more important to you than anything else, it never happens. 
It never happened. And then you might be like many other people and you'll rewrite the Bible. And you'll say these things aren't working this way. And you'll decide in your mind that, isn't, that the events are not going to transpire as God promised. And then you're going to be guilty of adding to the word and taking away from it. And I don't want to be in that position. No. I'm going to do what God says. Amen. And I'm going to leave results to him. Yes. I prayed for that boy who had no ears. I said in the name of Jesus, I command holes to form in your, in your sides of your head right now. I command hearing and the instruments of hearing to form in Jesus' name. And I command ears to form on the side of your head now in Jesus' name. Amen. What are you going to do? Counsel him? <laughs> Console him? Standing in line for a miracle. Jesus healed everyone that was sick and diseased. He looked at all the people and the masses of the people. He said, look at the harvest. Oh, look at this great harvest. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Oh, pray, that the, pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into his harvest. That's what the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire is all about. That's what you shall receive power from on high is all about. You know, here's, let me just tell you this in closing. Here's a glorious opportunity. Here is how immeasurable, how unlimited, how certain this opportunity is for you right now. When John identified the ministry of Jesus, he said, Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. If the ministry of Jesus Christ is still relevant today, then that's what he's doing. He's baptizing us in the Holy Ghost and fire. And the Bible perfectly describes what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You shall receive power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Jesus defined it, perfectly defined it. He said, if anybody's thirsty, come and drink. And this is what's going to happen. If you drink, I know what's going to happen. You're going to have rivers of joy coming out of you. You're going, to be, you, 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 you're going to be so happy, you couldn't be happier. Even if you're in prison. Yeah. They put my friend Joshua in prison. In China. And the prison guards pestered him and tormented him. Said, you're not going to make it in here. He gets in the prison, all the, all the criminals start saying... Yeah, we heard about you. And if you really, if God was really who you says, say he is, he would, you wouldn't be in here. And just threatening him. He laid down to go to sleep that night. And he glowed all night. He woke up and everybody is in the cell staring at him. And the guards are outside the jail cell staring at him. He's glowing all night. And he glowed every night that he was in prison until the prison was saved and they released him early. <laughs> and his church is probably somewhere around 20 or 30 million people. It's a new definition of church. This is the house church of China. They scattered out all over the place. But they pray and they cry out to God. China's changing because of the church. China's changing. It's changing everything. Korea's changing. The walls are coming down right now among people groups that have been imprisoned by the powers of darkness for hundreds and even thousands of years because these are the last days. And in these last days, Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all nations and then the end shall come. And when he defined this gospel of the kingdom, he was talking about the one that he preached. And he said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. His definition of the kingdom of God was very plain, very specific. He told his 12, the very next chapter, after he just prayed for the, heart, the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers, uh, chapter 10, Matthew, he anoints 12, gives them power to go and do the work of the kingdom. He said, go preach the gospel of the kingdom, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Huh? That's what he says. He says the same thing to the 70 others also. That's what he did. He says the same thing to you tonight. Are you too busy? Do you have another life that you want to live? 
<laughs> Will you hunger and thirst after the kingdom? Will you seek first the kingdom? Will you be willing to step past the fear? And the limitation. And let God's word be all the proof that you need. Stand before him on that day. <laughs> with the witness that you obeyed his word. That you did exactly what he said. The way he said to do it. Did not back down. Did not change it. Did not alter it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that the work of your grace is here in this place. And I call fire down upon every person's life in this place. I call the fire of the Holy Ghost. I call the fire of the living God down upon every life in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, nothing can remain the same. The fire of God begins to burn in your life. The floodlight of heaven begins to shine upon your soul. Everything about your life is exposed. The light exposes it. The gospel reveals it. The fire of God melts all the hardness, all the shell, all the deception, all the lies away. All the, all the manipulation of sin and the powers of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God falls upon you. In Jesus' name. Be filled with the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Right now, the power of God comes on you. Fire of God comes on you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything changes right now in Jesus' name. In Glanzo Toda die. Hallelujah. The fire of God. Fire of God. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now, fire of God. Meles today. Mong Rushadele. Erestekara Mabrade. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, fire God in your life, in Jesus' name. Call the fire God down upon your life right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing of your word. I thank you for the authority of your word. Right now, receive right now, in Jesus' name. Receive right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, receive the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> receive right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive right now. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. Receive right now. Fire of God right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. Receive. Nothing can be the same. Everything changes. Nothing can be the same. The power of God in your life. Power of the Holy Ghost in your life. The fire of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth melts away everything. It is contrary to the will of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In the name of the living God, I call the fire of God down upon your life. Now, in Jesus' name. Now. Now. Change in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fire of God right now in Jesus' name. The power of the living God right now fills you. Fills you. Fills you right now in Jesus' name. Nothing can lay claim upon your life except for the living God. Now, in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Right now. Change. Change. The fire of God comes upon your life and burns up all those things that would challenge you to be leaving God. And in doubt and unbelief goes. Now. <laughs> fire of God right there. Fire of God right there. Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The ministry of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The very ministry of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The workings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name, the working and ministry of Jesus. I call the fire God down upon your life right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Fire God in the name of the living God. Right now the ministry of Jesus Christ upon your life. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Call the fire of God down upon your life right now. In Jesus' name. The ministry of Jesus. Receive right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. 
Call the fire of God down upon your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. The, the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost. I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. The fire in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now in Jesus' name. I call the fire of God down upon your life. Right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost begins to burn like never before in your life. The fire of God, amen. Hallelujah. Consumed. Consumed by His will. Consumed by His presence. Consumed with His love and His grace. Fire of God upon you right now. It's all among Romadana, Mr. Paratai. Felt. Felt, my man, the Garastai, Iristara, fire got down upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, right now in Jesus' name. Fire God, <laughs> the fire of God, right now. Ikarastara Nambalekate, fire God, right now. Larastara Dekale, the fire of God, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. Fire God, right there. Fire God, right there. Fire God right there. Fire God. Fire God right there. Fire God. Fire! Oh God. The fire of the Holy Ghost. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The fire of God. Mangelic had a master parade. The fire! Mandam Brown de la Saya. The fire! Mamangelic. The fire of God. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of Masara. The fire! The fire that consumes, the fire that brings all that glory of heaven upon your life and fills you with everything, every good thing. <laughs> right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> right now in Jesus' name. Fire God. Right now in Jesus' name. Fire God. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Fire God. Hey. Fire God, and the fire of God, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of the fire of God, right now in Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The ministry of Jesus, right now. Right now. <laughs> the fire touched by the power of the living God. Touched. Receive. 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 Fire of God, right there in your house. Right now. Right now. Right now. Fire of God, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that the next time that, that, that Scott and Marlene are in church, Hanita will be with them. Fire God in Jesus' name. Fuego de Dios. Ora mismo. Ara sta prati chi in me. Fire God. Malakatana name. Irresitara name. Vida la caranja setele. Fire God right now. Fire God right now. Fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Mlange setele. The fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Fire of God. I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. I call the fire of God down upon your life right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. My mom just said the fire of God right now in the ministry of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 Hallelujah. 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 He carashata rata iti iti. Tu raba baba tase. O rama mandere stebra maya. Balatara seka reina nandalai. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord says, Surely I have anointed you for signs and wonders. Surely I have anointed you for the miracles that I would work in this last day, says God. Just stretch forth your hand and watch as you stretch forth your hand. I'll stretch forth mine. Speak and behold as the Spirit of the Lord speaks through you. For lo, the Spirit of God is in you and His Word is in your tongue. Hallelujah. Abando saca de ti. Fire God. Fuego de Dios. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mamrong jeng ning deng lakta The fire of the 
Ghost. The fire of God right now. Fire of God touches you right now. Fire of God, Lucas. Fire of God in your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost begins to burn in your life in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I call the fire of God down on you right now. Ministry of Jesus. The fire. The fire. The fire of God. The working power of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of truth. I call the fire of God down on you right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for the sick in just a minute. Fire of God upon your life. In Jesus' name, I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. The fire of God. And she prandus to Kurima. Right now, in Jesus' name, I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. I call the fire of God down upon your life. The very ministry of Jesus, the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire of God. Change. Change in your house. Change in your babies. Change in your life. Change. Hallelujah. How are you doing? What's your name? Susanna. Susanna, welcome. Have you, is Jesus Christ your Lord? I'm hoping so. You're hoping so? The Lord wants you to know so. He said a new heart, a new spirit I give you. Simply by calling upon his name. You call, he answers. Instantaneously, you call, he answers. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you call upon his name. And the Holy Ghost comes and works a miracle. So the Holy Ghost is going to work a miracle for you right now. Okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to know in this miracle, because I'm going I'm to I'm hook up with you in it, you're going to know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Did you know there was a Lamb's Book of Life? Did you know there was a book in heaven? Is your name there? Your name, you're going to know that your name is there. And you're going to know that you've been born from above. Because the Lord Jesus said, you must be born again. That's what he said. Born of the Spirit. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we're going to see the miracle of salvation happen for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Your whole life is going to change. You're going to turn your back on sin. You're going to turn your back on all the way that you've been living. You're going to turn your back on everything that concerns a life in this world. And you're going to follow Jesus as described in the Bible. And you can come back to church here. We're going to help you with that. So you know exactly what happens. But right now, the miracle is going to take place because you're willing. You're willing. Joy is going to fill your heart. It's going to happen right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. Right now, in Jesus' name, everything changes. The Holy Ghost comes upon you and a miracle of salvation begins to work in your life at this very moment to give you a new heart and a new spirit. The joy of the Holy Ghost fills your life. I break the strongholds and the power of every claim of Satan from off of your life. And I command you right now in Jesus' name, receive. Receive. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you give this dear lady the ability to recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he was raised up from the dead so that her life can be changed. And now in Jesus' mighty name, I command peace to come into your life. The power of the Holy Ghost to come into your life. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Spirit of the Lord. Be changed now. Be changed right now. Be changed right now. Be changed right now. Hallelujah. Now, do you, receive, do you believe you received a miracle? Yes. Well, that's good. 
because that's all it takes. You know, that's what I say to people that are crippled. I said, you really, I pray for them to receive a miracle to be healed so that they can walk. And just ask them that simple question. And the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen, and he's risen in my heart. Lord Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Lord. Just sing this with me. You have risen from the dead. You have risen from the dead, and you're my Lord. And my knees I bow, and my knees I bow. And with my tongue confess, <laughs> that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is your Lord. Say, Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That every yoke is broken. Everything about your life is changed. <laughs> You're going to walk around in the joy of the Holy Spirit. In the peace that passes understanding. <laughs> and find out that God, that God knew, us to, knew what he was talking about. That Jesus was for real when he said, I'll give you abundant life. I call the fire of God down upon you and your family. Ghost. The fire of the ministry of Jesus upon your life, upon your children, upon your family. The fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of the ghost. Godless the demon. Fuego de Dios. In Jesus' name. Everything about your life changes. Fire of the ghost. I call the fire of God down upon your life. The ministry of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The fire of God. The fire. The fire. Change the world. Change the world. Jesus changed everything when he died at Calvary and rose again. And ascended up on high. And he gave to you and me the power to go and proclaim liberty to the captives. To go and minister this great change, this great liberation. To set them free from the bonds of iniquity and sin. To set them free from the power of Satan. I call the fire of God down upon your life. In Jesus' name. I call the fire of God down right now in Jesus' name. The fire of God begins to burn in your life like never before. The ministry of Jesus. I call the fire down in Jesus name the fire of God in Jesus name call the fire of God down upon your life the fire of the Holy Ghost the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name I call the fire of God down upon you Satan will not be able to come steal you Satan will not be able to come and take you away. Because the fire of God comes into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The fire of God begins to burn in your life like never before. I call the fire of God down upon your life. 
I got the fire got down upon your life. Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the living God. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands right there. Right there, 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 right now. Right there, right now, right now. Be strengthened. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Yeah, be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. Being strengthened by the Spirit in your inner man gives you the capacity and the ability to be able to comprehend all these things that belong to you right now, been provided for you by Jesus. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Be filled right now. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Be filled right now. Be filled. Mamana Mangalela Shoda Manda Derdia. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Be filled. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto God. Be filled, Manjarataya. Be filled. Manjala Kosta Paro. Be filled, Mamana Kara no Mambro Seta Yelosta. Be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost, with the rumblings of heaven, with the movings of the Spirit of God. Right now, I command the rivers of passion to come forth. I call the rivers of God to come out of your life. Right now, in Jesus' name, the wells that have been stopped up, all the dams that have been forced up against you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you go free tonight. You go free tonight. You go free, you tonight. You go free 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 tonight. Free to worship him. Free to know him. Free to walk with him. Right now, in Jesus' name, the rivers will not be prevented from the people of God. Right now, no more passionless service to the King. Right now, the fire of God, in Jesus' name, the fire of God, the fire. The fire God, 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 the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire God, the fire God, the fire God, the fire of God, the fire, the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. This wonderful ministry of Jesus. This wonder. Fire God! The fire God! The fire! Your fire, Father! Fire God! Your fire! Fire the Holy Ghost! The wonderful ministry of Jesus! your mercy set this church on fire set this church on fire set this church on fire set this church on fire
Set this church on fire! 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 Mama, mama, neighbor. That this nation might burn with the fires of revival. Oh God! That the lost might see the power of your love and grace. Set this church on fire! I command everything to change. I command everything to change. Fire, the Holy Ghost, burns in your life right now in Jesus' name. The fire falls upon you. The fire of God right now. His word will be like a fire shut up in your bones. His word and the anointing of his spirit will proceed from your spirit in your mouth as a fire that burns and consumes everything that is unlike God the miracle power the healing power the authority of heaven now being expressed to your life like never before yes, because you resigned yourself to believe what God says and to live out the life that he describes no longer hanging on to your own life no more drawing back no more holding back. No more wondering for some day in the future. No more longer waiting for a day that you're worthy. But taking up that which Christ Jesus freely gave. When he gave all power and authority. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to begin to live a life of change from this day forward. Tomorrow you're going to find yourself sitting in the presence of Jesus Christ. Baptized in his glory. And you're going to watch as this fire of God begins to burn up the religion and begins to burn up the tradition and burns up the doubt and burns up the unbelief until it comes to a place of a tangible, rushing, mighty wind in your life. This is what God wills. This is what God wills. These are the last days. God will have His glorious boast in His Son. God will glorify the name of Jesus with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. And He's called you to go everywhere and preach the gospel beginning right in your home. 
right in your own hometown, right in the arenas of your influence. And with the fire and the authority of heaven as you kneel down in your living room or wherever it is you pray, or walking around in your yard lifting up your voice to heaven and making your petition request known unto God, and you bring those souls to the king, the king of kings, you're going to watch as one after the other falls under the authority of Almighty God and complete surrender to His will and to His way. You're going to watch as Holy Ghost conviction begins to sweep those that are around you. You walk in the room and people come under Holy Ghost conviction and know they need to get right with God. This is your assignment. This is why the fire of God has come. No more living dual lives. No more having a dual identity. No, law, no more spiritual bipolarism. No more of this nonsense driven with the wind of circumstance. But from this day forward, walking in a peace that the world could not take away. From this day forward, walking in a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. It is the joy of the Lord. It is the joy of His presence. It's the joy of this fellowship. It's the joy of this new life. This is a new day for you. A new day. That's right. That's right. A couple of people raised their hand when I asked if there was anyone with sicknesses or diseases. A couple of people. Dear lady, you raised your hand. Won't you come here? Who else raised their hand that had sickness or disease? Anybody else with sickness or disease? Come. Come. Well, welcome. What's wrong with you? I have diabetes. You have diabetes. Okay. Well, I, let me just tell you this. I see an afflicting, tormenting, evil spirit. A spirit of affliction. And so that's why you would describe a bunch of different things. A spirit of affliction. And what we're going to do in the name of Jesus is we're going to break the power of that affliction. And the disease that that evil spirit would impose upon your body. That trouble that he brought into your body, brought into your life, is going to be removed. That seed that he tries to plant of his disease will not be able to grow anymore. I'm going to kill it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, what's your name? Rosemary. Rose In the name of Jesus Christ, Rosemary, I set you free. Satan can afflict you and torment you no more with diabetes and with pain in your body, joint pain, all the rest of the affliction that goes along with it. fibromyalgia and all the other things that surround that spirit of affliction. Go from your body now in Jesus' name. Come. What's wrong? Huh? Your lungs. What's wrong with your lungs? In Jesus' name. Scott, look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this and pneumonia go out of your lungs right now. This infection goes out of your body in Jesus' name. Satan cannot afflict you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're healed. It's going to be right. You know, I was so amazed. As we just walked by and just barely touched people. Once again, it's always amazing to me. Just touch, giving everything to the Lord. And watching all the things that God does, the great miracles God does. Just a small touch. 
for the people to stand falling on the manifestation. It doesn't matter. Because the touch is not about the human hand. The touch is about the commission of God. The commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. The things that God has told us to do. That word that he will uphold with his power. That thing that he does when we're simply willing to be obedient and step out and trust him. We do something so simple and almost even just on the level of what might look to men as foolish. God comes with explosive power and you're going to awake with his likeness. With a changed mind. Now to more closely follow the things that are written in the word. To more passionately desire the ministry of Jesus to be revealed in your life and in your midst. You're going to have a greater passion to participate with the glorious church that Jesus Christ has built and is building. He said, upon this rock shall I build my church. Upon the revelation of this divine authority of who he is. The things that he wants, that Father wills, will consume you. And it'll be that which is most important to you above all other things. You'll live it and breathe it and eat it and sleep it. And in the midst of that hunger and passion, you'll be filled up more than you can contain. You'll learn how to drink. You'll learn how to drink and have the product of the drink. The product of the drink is rivers flowing. People are willing to abide religious programs where they supposedly drink. And there's not even a supposed river. But you're going to drink. And there's going to be the proof and the evidence of the rivers. The living God through your life, Cade. In Jesus' name. And through every person in this building tonight. Because God brought you here. He's brought you here for this time. For this moment. He has a strategic thing that he's doing in the earth. God's got a divine strategy. He's mobilizing his troops. He's mobilizing and sitting, setting things up in the world today. Empowering us to strike at his will. To move forward at his command. When Father utters his voice before his army. When God utters his voice. The mountains shall leap. The hills shall leap like rams. The mountains like lambs. The earth shall tremble at its presence. Blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. Signs and wonders in the heavens. It be as a garden of Eden before us. And as a desolate wilderness behind us. But because before his army... That burn the fire of God. That will consume the harvest. Consume it even to every plant. Every form of vegetation. Caught away in an encounter with God. It's the last day's ministry. We've seen the first part of the prophecy that Joel spoke of. The last day saith, God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and you shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters, hallelujah, shall prophesy, hallelujah. And your handmaidens and your servants shall prophesy, hallelujah. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. I'll show signs in the heavens and the earth. We'll see an army. We'll see a great manifestation of the glory of God because there's going to be a church in this generation that's going to get down on its face like generations before us did and cry out until the glory falls, until the fire falls. Somebody said to me, oh, you're praying for the Holy Ghost to fall and the fire to fall. Well, the Holy Ghost has already fallen. The fire has already fallen. And, and my, my, what I really want to do is answer them and say, well, could you please show me any evidence of it in your life? That's really what I want to say, but I don't. I just leave it. I want, bib I want the biblical results. I praise God for everything that he's done. I praise God for every miracle, for every sign, for every wonder, for everything. 
for all of his blessings. But I know, I read in the Bible that there's so much more to the Holy Spirit, so much more that God wants to do. And when we get serious with it, when we really believe it, yeah, well, we're going to lay hold on it. That's what's going to happen. We'll lay hold on it. And, and when we know that he's God and, and that we are his people and this is what he's going to do, we will not rest until it is seen and it comes to pass. Amen. Is there anyone in here, anyone else with any pain or affliction in your body? I feel like that there's someone here who's dealing with pain and affliction in your body, in your leg, in your joints. It, 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 okay, I want you to come because I want that pain to go out. Is you have pain in your knee or your back? Where's that? Where's the affliction? Is it in your knee? It's right there. Okay. Just come stand up here. Just going to lay hands on you. Pain's going to go out of your body. And now what I want you to do is when I'm praying for people, I want you to hook up with me. I learned in the school of the spirit being taught by men of God who've gone before us that what you do is you learn how to pray while the minister is praying. So that, and then the whole church is praying. That way you're not distracted and wondering, you know, what kind of boring now. But you're caught in the anointing. And as you begin to pray, that same gifting begins to take hold of you and begins to work through you. You actually become a part of the miracle or the healing or the prophecy. And as you do, that gifting begins to flow through your life and operates in your life beyond just the context of agreeing with someone else. I've watched this happen over and again. People will come into my meetings, go in Carlos Santa Condia meetings, you name the meetings, and they'll come under the authority of that miracle anointing that God gave us for that meeting. And they'll be able to lay hands on the sick, they'll be able to cast out devils, whereas before they never did. Never happened in their life, and it just happens very, very easily. They hook up with the anointing in the context of the meeting. I'm saying every meeting you can hook up with that which is flowing, not from me, but from the head Christ Jesus down to his body, as is described in Ephesians chapter 4. And then that which is flowing from the head Christ Jesus, if you're connected, it will, it will flow to you as well, because that flows down and supplies now, I feel the pain going. I see the pain going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sickness is, the pain is going. The affliction is going out of your body. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And, you're gonna, and what you're going to do is you're going to discover that you have authority over pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have authority. Pentecostals aren't supposed to be in prayer lines. Those who have been endued with power are from on high. If you need healing, you're supposed to get in your own prayer line. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. We are helpers of your faith. So that's the balance of that. And now as you're maturing and you're growing strong in the Lord, you need somebody to hook up with you in faith. To turn the battle to the gate when, it, when, it, when a battle's, uh, an enemy of disease has come out against you. An enemy of affliction is coming out against you. An enemy of opposing circumstances coming out against you. Financial crisis, whatever, we get to hook up together. We get to be helpers of your faith. And watch as the miracle takes place. But a miracle's going to happen. Hey, look, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but guess what? Here's the good news. God delivers us from them all. <laughs> I haven't been sick for many, many, many years. I've walked in divine health. But it isn't to say that sickness doesn't come and try to attack my body. It's just that I rise up on the authority of the Lord and run it off in Jesus' name. Why? Because I've grown in that area of my life. Faith has increased in the area of my life. What area do you want faith to increase in your life? Every area. True. True. There are circumstances. I give it to you just as I'm, as I'm getting ready to go and pray for these. There are pains leaving their body. Some uh, pains already left the body. Others, pain still... Lingering a bit. But it's going to all go. Well, we're pressing in for 100% of the people, not 20, 30% of the people getting healed, which has been the normal statistics. Look, praise God for 20, 30%. In Nazareth, that's the greater works. Are you with me? 20, 30% of the people getting healed in Nazareth is greater works ministry. Because when Jesus went into Nazareth, where there was doubt and unbelief, he did no mighty works there. That's what Scripture says, right? But we're watching faith as God sovereignly moves by his power begin to captivate people's lives. Jesus sent out the 12. He told them to go. 
<laughs> you know, they, they still were wondering what manner of man is this to command the wind, the waves, and they obey. Now he's telling them they've never done it before. Go raise the dead. Go cast out devils, you know. And they're like, you mean you're not going with us? No, go. And boy, was that every step of faith. And so they're going, they're having great signs and wonders. Devils are subject to them through his name. <laughs> and they come to a boy, which was a terrible scene. The demon spirit would throw the boy into the water, into the fire, into the water to drown him. That's pretty, that's terrible. Into the fire to burn him and destroy him. And they had never encountered anything of this scale in terms of demon power. And then they allowed the scholars and the Pharisees to whisper things. Well, you know why this is going on. You know, we know you guys got power because you're around Jesus of Nazareth. You know, they've given him counsel. We know they were because Jesus said, why are you listening? What, what, what's going on here? Jesus shows up. Now, he's going to come be a helper of their faith. That's what he's going to do. They, they said, well, and he cast out the devil. And, and the boy was in, instantly healed. And they said, well, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus is really simple about it. He doesn't go through a great theological exercise. He says, because you have no faith. Wait, 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 time out. Literally, he used the word epistis. In the Greek language, it is, is epistis. And it means no faith, clearly. It doesn't mean unbelief. No faith. <laughs> now, we know they had faith. Jesus gave it to them. And they went and did great things. But in that particular instance, they had none. Now they need the helper. They're in the school of the Spirit, praise God. And Jesus is the teacher right now. Jesus said, listen, he looks at them and says, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I go not away, if I don't go away, the Holy Ghost can't come. When the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to expedite this. He's going to advance the school of the Spirit in your life. Now, I'm telling you right now, if those guys who had Jesus to be their teacher, who watched Jesus do these mighty signs and wonders, who Jesus took them to a whole other level of faith by what he modeled for them, being in those meetings, if they needed the Holy Ghost so that they could understand how to flow and operate in the things of God, how much more do you and me? You need to just get hungry. You need to get hungry. Nothing else becomes important to you but Jesus. That's the change that happens to your life tonight. I command that because the fire God down on your life. Too many people have had a lot of other things that are important to them. And that's why that is the source of sadness and disappointment and discouragement and sorrow and death. When Jesus is everything, it's like I said to the man, you're looking into the earth realm. You're looking into the circumstance. You see the problem. I'm looking into heaven. I see Jesus. He's the answer. That's to all the proof I need. She's healed. You change. You change. Feeling pretty good up here? Hallelujah. Now walk around in authority over pain from this day forward. <laughs> Feeling pretty good? <laughs> Feeling better? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just walk around. <laughs> 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 Yeah. How are you doing? Huh? Good. What did you do to yourself? I don't know. Where do you have pain still? It's almost gone all the way. Where it's almost all gone. Where's it at? In the back. Oh. Relax. <laughs> You've been tense for too long. You've been trying so hard for so long. Brad, he's over there trying so hard. And he doesn't need to. The Lord looks at us and says, rest. Rest. 
he looks at the disciples after he'd been pleading with them to pray with them for one hour, and they didn't. He said, rest. It's finished. Rest. 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 Can I take all the burden away? Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I ordained you to have the ability to ask the Father whatever you want. And he'll do it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? Wow. Just come into the school of the Spirit. So that your eyes might be open. Father, I thank you for this Holy Ghost man that has no pain. <laughs> that has power over pain. Authority over pain. In Jesus' name. When it comes, it has to go. It has to go. Because God says, the Lord empowers you and me. It has nothing to do with what we deserve because that's not the way he operates. Men operate that way. Men will control you. And then they'll give you some kind of ability when you deserve it. God, he empowers us and gives us ability when we don't deserve it. He said, I want you to go and represent me. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. And I'm going to give you divine authority to represent me. I wanted to minister tonight on Isaiah chapter 55. You're just going to have to come back on Wednesday. Because the Lord has given me such a profound word of life and instruction from Isaiah chapter 55. And in, in it, he tells us a few things that he wants us to do. And as a result, he says, the nations will run to us. And if the nations are going to run to us because he's in our midst, because we're willing to meet a couple of conditions, come on. How about a town? <laughs> How about a county? How about a city? Hallelujah. Jesus is here. He really is. He's here. He's here. A boy had a deaf and dumb spirit. Jesus stuck his fingers in his ears and said, eh, 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 ha. No one knows what that means either. Somebody said it's Hebrew, not Hebrew. Someone said, oh, it's Aramaic. It's not Aramaic. Eh, 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 ha. He spit. And he touched his tongue with his tongue. Now, if you went to a meeting like that, <laughs> You would say, what would you say? <laughs> the things that the Spirit of the Lord says get people healed. True. Get people full of joy. You know that there's a shout and a scream for you right now? There really is. There's a joy unspeakable for you right now. There is a fire of God that is available for right, you for right now. You'd jump so high you almost hit the ceiling. And then you'd take off and you hit the ground. You'd take off running. We'd catch you somewhere in downtown. That's what happened to Elijah when he got hit by the fire of God. He did. Look, Elijah called the fire of God down. And it not only lapped up the water and burned up the sacrifice, it hit him too. 
And he took off running, and he outrun the chariot and the horse that I had. Huh? He did. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then when Jezebel was all turned up against he took off and ran all the way down in, into the midst of the desert of Saudi Arabia. For days he ran under the power of God. Elijah was known as a man who was caught away by the spirit of the living God. He defines translation, what it means to be translated by the Holy Ghost. He would say, no, we're not going to go tell anybody where you're at. Because as soon as we leave here, the spirit of the Lord will catch you away and take you someplace into a high mountain where no one can find you. He's been translated all the time. Of course, we really see him get translated one day when a chariot comes, takes him all the way to heaven, not just to a mountain. Some people think Philip was the first one to be translated. He wasn't. Jesus, the, the, the boys in the boat with Jesus in the storm, they got translated. They, were in, they had only barely made it out, hardly two miles out from the shore. And they were rowing against the wind and the waves. Jesus comes, speaks peace to the storm. That, that, that's the time Peter walked on the water. As soon as they got in the boat, they were immediately to the shore. I'm into the Jesus ministry. I'm into living in the heavenly realm. I'm seated in a heavenly pl place, blessed with all spiritual blessings in a heavenly realm. Citizen of the heavenly kingdom, translated into that heavenly place, into the dear Son, Christ Jesus. And an entrance is being ministered to me abundantly by the Spirit of the Lord as to how to enter in to that eternal realm. Hallelujah. So we're going to... We're going to walk in the school of the Spirit, be taught of God. And I'm so blessed at what Adam's doing right now. He's taking a torch in evangelism, street evangelism. Others of you are. Do it. You've got to go and do. You've got to go and, you've got to go and participate. I heard Catherine Coleman talking about one time. She said, you know, after the Lord had anointed me to preach the gospel, she said, I didn't know anything about, really, about the Holy Ghost. I had never seen anyone receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I knew nothing about it. I came from a denomination, Methodist, knew nothing about it. And um, so she had about, you know, 15, 16 people in the meeting. And that night, there was only about three people left. A woman had given her life to Jesus, and she was there praying with her. And she talked about how all she could do is just tell people what she knew. She could only minister to them what she knew. She faithfully ministered to what all she knew. That's all God expects. You faithfully do that, and there's going to be no limitation. There's no bounds. There's no bounds. She said she was sitting there that night, that woman who gave her life to Jesus. Suddenly, she lifted up her head from the altar where she was praying. Her face began to shine and glow with the presence of Jesus. And she heard the most beautiful language come out of her as she began to sing in the Spirit. She had never seen anybody baptized in the Holy Ghost. That was her second encounter with the Holy Ghost. First one was as a little girl sitting in a Methodist church at most, could pack 100 people in there, and there wasn't nearly that many. She was holding the big Methodist Bible, and so suddenly her body began to tremble. And there she gave her life to Jesus. She was born again there at that moment. No one called it, and there was no altar call. By the pastor, it was an altar call by the Holy Spirit to a hungry heart. He's here. Respond to him. Somebody said, oh, I want to, I want to. Okay, then simply respond to him and obey him tomorrow and all the time. And the more you respond to him, the more you obey him, the stronger his influence will be, the louder his voice, the louder his manifest presence. Follow him. Walk with him. Do what he says. Do what you know to do. And watch what God does as he enlarges your capacity to receive more and shows you how to walk out this life, this glorious life in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Rivers of God flow out of me, flow out of me. Rivers of God flow out of me, flow out of me, flow out of me to the thirsty, flow out of me to the needy, flow out of me to a dry and thirsty land. Flow out of me to the thirsty, flow out of me to the needy, flow out of me to a dry and thirsty land. Rivers of God flow out of me, flow out of me. Rivers of God flow out of me, flow out of me, flow out of me to the thirsty, flow out of me to the needy, flow out of me to a dry and thirsty land. Rivers of God flow out of me, flow out of me. Rivers of God flow out of me. Flow out of me, flow out of me to the thirsty. Flow out of me, flow out of me to the needy. Flow out of me, flow out of me to a dry and thirsty land flow out of me. Their untold riches, their untold giftings and abilities, unseen realms of my divine glory, says the Lord. There's all my church, all men everywhere have always been invited into, and few have come. Don't let this opportunity by bypass you. Don't let this opportunity be missed. It's your time to rise and shine. It's your time to burn with the fires of divine glory. No more of this sorrow, no more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord, send your latter rain. Mature me and perfect me, grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you. Yes, Lord Jesus. No more of this sorrow. No more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your latter rain. 
mature me and perfect me. <laughs> Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you. All I want is you. Prophesy one more time. No more of this sorrow. To you, Lord, send your latter rain. Mature me, Lord, perfect me. <laughs> Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. Yes, Lord. All I want is you. All I want is you. No more of this sorrow. Mature me and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. <laughs> All I want is you. <laughs> Sing it again. Sing it and keep on singing. No more this sorrow, no more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your latter rain. Mature me and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you. All I want is you. No more of this sorrow. No more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your latter rain. <laughs> Grow Stretch me. My soul is it. All I want is you. No more of this sorrow. No more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your ladder. Mature and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you. All I want is you. No more of this sorrow. No more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your ladder rain. Mature me and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. 
All I want is you, Lord. All I want is you. No more of this sorrow. No more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord. Send your Mature me and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you, Lord. All I want is you. Glorious God, my Father and King, I surrender myself, and by your Spirit I sing, worship and praise unto your holy name. Jesus, my Lamb, my Savior, my Lamb that was slain. Three days past and you rose up again, captivity's keeper of my salvation. Lord, send your fire and baptize me now. It's the cry of my heart, your purpose and plan. Saturate us in your presence until we can't stand. And then up from the floor and out the door, suited for battle and ready for war. Faith is my shield and your word is my sword. Your helmet's my salvation and your joy is my strength. Your joy is our strength. We won't be like those whose heart melted and whose spirit was faint. Jesus, we worship you. Come and send your fire now, Lord. Come and send your fire now. Come and send your fire. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Send your fire now, Lord. Send your fire now. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The greatest miracle a human being can receive is the miracle of salvation. This is the miracle that Jesus Christ died for. This is the miracle that Jesus received the most bloodiest, brutal, beating, and torturous death for you and for all of mankind. Don't ever belittle that. Don't ever lose sight of that. God has called you to repentance. Praise God, you answered that call to repentance. God has called you to righteousness and holiness. Praise God, you answered that call. Now God is calling you to do the work of an evangelist. Rise up, church. Rise up and go preach the gospel. Go preach the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation that is the power of god that is the greatest miracle a human being can see can receive don't ever forget that don't ever get distracted by anything other than what god has already done for you he's purpose and plan for you to answer that call disqualified from that call nonsense nonsense you're not disqualified from that call nonsense you answered that call to repentance you answered that call to righteousness and holiness now answer that call to be an evangelist disqualified no you're not disqualified you're not disqualified you have not been disqualified god is calling you to do the work of an evangelist thank you jesus thank you jesus
mature me and perfect me. Grow me, Lord, and stretch me. All I want is you. All I want is you. You come back with us on Wednesday night and we'll just press in for more and watch as God builds you up and strengthens you by His Spirit so that you may be able to receive that which the Holy Ghost is supplying and prophesy. So that you may grow and mature and excel into every good work in Christ Jesus being perfected and prepared unto every good work and function and flow in the operate of greater works in the gifts of, mer- gifts of healing, working of miracles and the gift of faith. Hallelujah. 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 We want you to hook up with us for a financial miracle of provision for your own life. We need a miracle of finances and provision for the ministry and the things the Lord's called us to do. And so what we can do is we can hook up together and watch this miracle be supplied to both needs with one act. Because the Lord's promise that when you give, He will cause all grace to abound unto you so that you will have all sufficiency in all things. And he shall also give to you in in proportion as you give. If you give sparingly, he will also give to you sparingly. But nonetheless, you're still going to receive, which is praise God. (laughs) Amen. But if you give liberally, he's going to give liberally and generously to you. But not by, you don't have to. It's not by constraint. God wants you to do it cheerfully. He wants you to do it joyfully, recognizing that it's the offering. It's the worship. The offering and the worship are synonyms in the Old Testament. The worship was defined by the offering. The offering defined the worship. And every offering represented Jesus. Let the offering that you bring represent Jesus. Let it be the kind of offering, hallelujah, that God can bless, one that's from your heart. So it doesn't matter if it's two mites or two billion dollars, hallelujah, huh? (laughs) Doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. So I want you to worship the Lord with your giving. And then we want you to find everybody, hug them, tell them that you love them and bless them in Jesus' name. And watch as God takes you to a whole nother realm of flowing in the Holy Ghost. Thank you.